game number one. We have another series on our hands, and as promised, it is Washed Up versus Team Russia. And well, Washed Up, as some of you already know, of course, but I feel I have to put it out here again, has played in Meta Madness with a mixed team. That's why we called them Washed Out back then. Mena, JPL, and Eternal unfortunately couldn't make it at that particular weekend, so they had sub players. But now they are back in full force here for Division S, and they go up against Team Russia. And the Russians, I mean, if they haven't crowned themselves to be the comeback kings at the uh, Meta Madness tournament, even before that already, they were insane. I mean, let's face it, these guys were already nuts before the tournament. But I feel especially at Meta Madness, what they pulled off was nuts. It was insane. And if they can do, like, if they can continue that trend, then they seem to be really unbeatable. But then again, who do, go, who do, they, blah, who do they go up against here today? They are going up against Washed Up, and so far Washed Up, when they were in their final, in their full form with all five team members together, even when they were playing with JPL not there, but Billy subbing for him, they just murdered people. They did so exceptionally well. They are such a strong team, it's honestly insane. And they've barely, they've won the Nut Cup, they won the first qualifier for Division S, they absolutely obliterated their opponent in the first week of Division S. And now we're going to find out if they can do that again to Team Russia, who's definitely one of the top four teams that we have in that league right now. So washed up with the immediate ban against Imperius. We're having also traditionally from the second ban position. But in this case from the first ban, we see Zaratul Mayev both taken apart. And they're missing a ban! Uh, okay. Smex is apparently not really used to being to having the crown there. I personally would have expected Anubarak to be banned out. I mean, it's Zorg on the other side. So, uh, <laughs> I'm wondering who's going to be blamed for that one. But be it as it may, Anubarak is taken. Stork picks it here immediately. And that leads us to our first double pick for Washed Up. Since it is Volskaya Foundry, so of course immediately the question, what are we going to get on the mage department? Taranda and Reyna first of all. Okay, so Smexy. Smexy's getting Taranda. And Mene gets Reyna. That is likely to end up in the hands of Hazu Ops later on here. But yeah. So probably Hazu gonna jump on uh, on Reyna. I would be very surprised if Mene is actually sticking with that pick for the entire time being. But let's find out what exactly they're going to try and uh, set up here. Of course, Jaina would work with their setup now too. But first of all, we have Anna and Li Ming being played by Kola Martian and Banner Beer. So even more nano boost value and the quick resets that can come in as well. A scary lineup already as it stands. A new Burak engage and then just a fire from all angles. I would say that Urel or Blaze would really fit with that lineup. Still expecting that Leoric to maybe be taking it too. Uh, and when it comes to bans... <laughs> okay, this time he hits the button, it's Alarak. <laughs> They're banning Alarak out, alright. Well done, well done. With that said, you can still ban the front line. Indeed! Okay, so Diablo taken away, which leaves us with a potential Garrosh pick, with a potential Johanna pick. Both of them would be good. Uh, JPL, of course, has also played quite a bit of Muradin, but I would still think that those two heroes are fitting the bill of what they're trying to do here a lot better. Uh, Garrosh hit point pool in his presence, him throwing into a stun straight for Tyrande as a setup, and also Johanna. Eternal loves his URL, so since they have the next pick, they take her. And Hanzo goes to Hazo Ops. Yeah. That's actually now interesting. I still guess we're going to see them switching the two heroes around, but they could also play in this particular setup. There's the rat on the other side, and are we going to see Blaze now on the offlane? Is it going to be Leoric instead? I mean, there's even a setup where you can argue for... Uh, maybe, uh, maybe not. But yeah. And something that's a little bit more beefy, at least as a stunt uh, setup. Rexa, how could I forget about Rexa? It's the Russians, like, duh, color, please, come on, dude. You're better than that. Obviously, it's Rexa. It's Volskaya Foundry and it's Team Russia. What am I thinking? Of course, it's Rexa. What a dummy. But yeah, Johanna or Garrosh? That's pretty much the question here. One of the two. Currently, think of what else is available if there's. Ah, uh, Tyrion. Huh. Okay. 
fair enough, fair enough. Interesting. Okay. T I mean, he's great on Tyrael. We have your sanctification. You can give the protection with a shield. Personally, I really expect that uh, Garrosh or John will be taken. But as it stands, let's head in. Both Sky Foundry. Game number one. Game number one in our best of five here at Division S. Washed up on the left side with Hasobst on Reyna. Mene on Hans also, as expected. They switched those two heroes over. JPL finds himself on Tyrael with Eternal on Urel again. And the Smacks Master on Turanda. On the right side, in the meantime, Banabir on Liming. We have Stork for Team Russia on Anubarak. Falinda on Junkrat. Call your Martian on Anna. And Toxic is playing Rexa. Yeah, especially that. I, f I feel this by now we have seen Rexa banned out so many times that the hero sometimes just doesn't even appear on my radar anymore. Especially when the Russians play, because I automatically assume that he is going to be banned in the setup. But yeah, interesting, to say the least, to have now that Tyrael composition. I don't think it can't work. If anyone has shown that that hero is actually still incredibly powerful, I would say it's even stalled because of his aggressive playstyle that he oftentimes shows. Yeah, and with Urel in there, that can definitely work out for them. But we have seen also a lot of Garrosh against the Nubarak. We've seen a lot of Johanna being played on this battleground. So I could have totally seen both of them being taken here. In the meantime, we have the rotation towards the top side. I mean, again, it, the goal is you get your you get your um, setup as you hit level or one minute mark. You want to go for your particular for your particular item here. Eternal, okay, gets stunned out again. Still dodging, diving and jiving, and actually gets away from this. And here comes the flank. One stun connects, but not more that they can follow that up with. Yeah, but Eternal getting out because he jumped over the first stun that socks it out. I think if both of those stuns connect, then he is very likely dead. But now we have those turrets about to be taken. It's of course the opening map in our series here. Hanzo is still at the top side. Mene with a copper pick. I question the color, but I appreciate the mount. And, well, Washed Up has been the team in Division S. They have been the team. And the question is really, can Team Russia take them down here? So far, they haven't lost the map. Washed Up, that is. That might change today, because the Russians, they're incredibly strong. But then again, it's Washed Up, and they have been absolutely dominant so far. So top side, we're still seeing, of course, now both of the teams keeping a bit of an eye on that healing beacon. Or we saw that until Stark and his boys just grabbed it. That's normally what we have after the initial item rotation. As soon as the objective is spawning, we're also going to have one, both of them eyeing on level 7. So you're going to try and get as much experience on these side lanes as you possibly can. Mena has already jumped out here as Hazorov is also dodging most of the damage. But the aggression that we are used to from the Russians is still in full force here. They are still full on going for this one. At the bottom of the map, meantime, we have Eternal just sitting tight. Doesn't risk anything here. Plays this slow, plays this steady, waits for the experience to come to him. And of course now, as the objective is announced, both the teams are also heading straight into the mercenary camp so that they are pushing the top lane while the actual fight happens in the middle. That traditionally forces the hero topside. Then it's a question, who has the better wave here? Who can play with that? But the real action is going to come in right here. And this is normally where you want to have hit point heavy heroes because you're just trying to hold the position for you as long as you can. Now JPL will have the mobility, but the one thing that you oftentimes are missing with Tyriel is that heavy hit point pool. And granted, it doesn't exist necessarily on Team Russia's side either, but when worst comes to worst, they can sacrifice Misha on the point and use the bear and already the dive in with the stuns eternal safe for now seven isn't there yet for either one of the teams mena is moving towards the top to try and pressure junkrat as well as catch the experience here it's already playing around it we don't have the progress for any of these teams starting up yet but let's see the of the map again the battle between the two offlaners nice extra damage against stalk well done here has also with a little bit of free dps against him but he has a level seven talents for both right now hunter gather up by the way on four over the animal husbandry and level seven now the reciprocate taken and here comes jpl again dodging the stuns out but he doesn't dodge the sleep and the second stun hits home and they are chasing them off the point and that's exactly 
we've been talking about earlier a bit and addressed it. And with Rexa in play, it might be a bit of a difficult stance for Washed Up here. They need to be careful with that play now. They are reclaiming it because we're seeing the Russians head into their next item. And nobody on the side of Washed Up is actually making the play on the left. They're thinking about invading this. They're actually thinking about invading this, but instead it's Eternal eating free damage and... Ooh, baby! <laughs> <laughs> Free damage and a lot of that too goes from 100 to 0 in barely no time. And that's a bad, bad moment now for uh, Washed Up. That is not working well for them. And again, I feel like they were a little bit hesitant between either starting to jump back and going for their own item or instead trying to commit to an attack here. And then JPL is, well, they're not jumping in and URL is more or less caught, so that kill is really doing a number on Team Russia. Washed Up will still able to fight, but they now are also behind again in items, and clearly behind at that, because we are having a healing beacon and two turrets in the hands of them. Nice vision granted. Mena still sitting around here. Healing beacon is getting attacked, but is it really going to be taken? They're trying to keep it up. Uh, they're trying to keep the aggro up here, but they're starting to move back onto the control point for now. Alright, still contesting that slightly, but things are actually getting dicey now. They definitely are. Okay, there we go. Misha is on the point again, trying to hold it for as long as they possibly can. They're gonna go for the 99. They're gonna go for the 99%. Your overtime has started. That's bad news. Bad news. Eternal still jumping out, chased by two. And up here at the top, they're trying to go for Misha. They get at least get Misha down. But can they really fight this long enough? Look at this experience. That's another big problem. It's actually gonna be level 10 before Washed Up has it in the hands for Russia. And that is gonna give them maybe just the small edge that they need. 5 seconds, 10 seconds on that with heroic abilities and you might lose not only the objective but also lose a hero or two. So Washed Up moves back. They let it go, they let it slide. They're accepting it. They're saying, okay, it's fine. Look at the stuns, by the way, on Smexy. 9 stuns already. He's already sitting at 9 stuns at level 9. Barely level 10. So actually really, really getting the numbers in here. Granted, he has the added advantage of going up against Misha. So that's another body in there. Barnabi already with a damage attempt here at the top. Went straight for the... Ooh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Barnabi went straight for the um, uh, Wave of Force here. Try to play around that. Now we have the level 10 abilities, of course, on both sides. But still, mid lane is kind of opened up. And here comes the move towards the top. And this is, of course, the important one. You prep for the objective. And that's exactly what you do now. Washed up is in a bit of trouble here. They're not far behind yet or anything. But they lost their retreat option at the top in form of a fountain. They're starting to also fall behind in... I mean, in kills. Okay, it's one kill. I mean, so uh, let's, let's just... Uh, yeah. Let's not over-exaggerate here, but you know what I mean. It's it's starting to snowball a little bit in favor of Team Russia. That arrow could maybe change it, but there's not enough follow-up. The problem is not only that, it's also that Stock still holds onto a healing beacon, so there's still an item advantage. Oh, Banabir! <laughs> nice attack, but good save. Good save as well. Stock popping the cooldown on the cocoon. And now they're trying to make the play for the healing beacon. I mean, you have to risk something if you're washed up at this point. You need to make a play. They're going for it. All right. <laughs> Both of them are booped off. And JPL jumps back in. So does URL. The sanctification. As they're trying to go for the point. Misha is down. Bana Beer is low. But the rip tire rips Maxi apart. And URL, can she stand long enough on the point here? Stalk is low. Gets healed. Healing beacons on the ground too. And they're diving after Eternal. They've taken the healing beacon already. The item advantage still in the hands of Team Russia. And Eternal now bare lead not able to get out misha goes in secures the kill and now this is open hazel survives with 40 50 hit points gets away but things are starting to look a lot better now for team russia than even before they won the first protector they won the next fight they still have the healing beacon advantage over their opponent and there's items on the map that they can claim to and obviously they are also now in the lead in experience team russia they're looking good they're looking very good here Mena <laughs> realizes that even underneath the fort, he's not 100% safe. So I had to move away from this one. But still, nice move for him. 13 talents are in. Do you fight? Does Washed Up fight? Despite the talent disadvantage? No, they don't. That means double item for the opponent again. And that means we have three. Two turrets once this one is claimed. Plus the healing beacon. Team Russia is looking very, very strong here. And all of a sudden, Washed Up looks vulnerable. 
Uh, looks actually vulnerable at this point. Rex has an entire zoo. He has a golden cock, he has a bear, and he has a hawk. I mean, that guy is running an entire zoo here. So, it's... That's pretty, pretty interesting. I wonder if they get jealous of each other, somehow. Mid lane pressure. This might be not the only one. I mean, the insects over here with the beetles. JPL jumping in again. They have 13 versus 13 now. So, at, that's at least something. I mean... At least you're not in a position where you have to fight against the talent disadvantage over the objective itself. Hardly you're gonna see level 16 unless the fire is completely dragged out for an eternity. There's the Hunter Gatherer already completed by uh, Raxa. Toxic getting that. Uh, level 13 talents. There's a, oh, once again, trying to jump in here against JPL. And JPL is playing with that mobility of the Sword of Justice now. Okay. And he has to, too. I mean, at this point, you need to be pretty quick on your feet with Tyrael if you really want to get some value out of him. For everything else, you need to go just for a different frontliner. It's actually one of the reasons why I originally thought that we might see Johanna here, because it helps you also to dodge out on a lot of the stuns that we're going to see from the opponent. Or Garrosh, to just limit Anubarak's movement a little bit more. Just make sure that he can't get too much value out of diving in deep. Objective taken. It's only a level away from level 16 to be honest. And look at Rexa, he's actually jumping between the lanes and trying to get that level for them. They might be succeeding with this. I mean, they already hold all the cards in their hands here. They're having extra items, they have the fountain. And the only thing that Team Russia is doing right now is they're saying like, well, take all the time that you need. We're gonna try and get the experience. We're gonna soak it on both sides. We're gonna get level 16 and we have three big advantages over you. And you might have 99% on the objective, but we are going to take it. And that could happen, unless there's a counter kill. That's, of course, the flip side of this. If you move out too far, then you're in trouble. 66% for now. And there we are going. There we're going right now. Yeah. Are they giving that up? <laughs> okay, they actually do it. They actually move away from it. They actually move away from that. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, that's Protector number two. That should... I mean, at this point, I don't really think you can make the play for the keep. 16 talents, well, maybe, but traditionally you would expect him to drop the fort in the middle, move down to the bottom and prep this lane here as well. But yeah, washed up. They're simply accepting that they're not going to win this one. They're saying, okay, they got the experience. It wasn't fast enough. We weren't quick enough. The objective was spawned a bit too late there. They're actually delaying it too. I mean, look at Kolya Martian. He's just now starting to go in. That is actually an interesting... Like, why would you do that? I'm honestly a little bit weirded out by this because they are literally allowing their opponent now to get level 16 on fight on even talents. They still have an advantage through the fountain. They still have an advantage through the items. But they literally just allowed Washed Up to fight on even talents instead of just denying that battle to them. Very, very interesting move by Team Russia. They want that fight, apparently. Now they get it. 16 versus 16. If they win it, it's all good. They might even just decide, get a game-deciding advantage here. But if they lose that fight now, it's absolutely open again. I honestly don't understand why they wouldn't just stay on that point. All right. Now we see the uh, turret taken out. One turret is in. At least one item. They're starting to go for the point again. He has the cocoon in the ground, trying to burn that down. Gets it quickly. Talking about burning it down. A Nuburak is low, but Stalk gets healed by the healing beacon. That's a big advantage that they had, of course, earlier. A lot of items are destroyed here, and in comes UL. It starts jumping in again. Goes for Farlander. Second healing beacon is on the ground. Farlander gets actually pushed out. And Nuburak is low, and JPL is still on the point. They got the fountain. But we could see a kill here. Oh, you rattle. Oh, and that's the end of the... That, that's the red down. Guys, Washed Up might just have come back into the game. The fight isn't over yet, but Washed Up might just have come back into the game because the Russians, for some reason, just said, you know what, screw it, we're gonna allow them to have the fight. And now we're seeing the kills coming in. Misha is dead, and that's Banabir for... No, my God, no, what? <laughs> Barnabia gets away, Neurel falls, but the Protector is still in the hands of Washed Up. Unbelievable. Honestly unbelievable.
That was the big chance of Russia to get so far ahead in this game to absolutely snowball it and they just missed out because they did not move on to the point. They moved off it, allowed the fight and now we're having washed up with a chance to come back in the game. Yeah, and they, they let the top fort be and they should, they should move down to the bottom of the map and try to prepare the bot lane. That's the best move they can make. Take those lanes down, already work on the minion wave, move down and try to get that fountain. Try to make that rotation. Instead we're seeing them jump into the middle. Getting the value there is also enough. They're starting to take all of those fountains down. I, yeah, Raina's Raiders is helping out with that too. Here comes the rotation bot side that we've been talking about a little bit. And already Mena is just firing away here. Gets a bit of damage in. Seems so a bit too close to the action, but of course the fountain is going to fall and this is the setup for the next objective. This is the setup for wave 3. This, th this is the next objective right there, so taking the fountain down and maybe even eliminating that uh, fort is going to give you a huge advantage over your opponent. That's exactly what they're doing. I, I, I can't believe that we're in this point. Now the experience lead is real because Junkrat has been pushing out the top lane the entire time and someone will have to deal with that eventually, so Washed Up is going to jump in on that point. But in the meantime, the fight at the bottom might even still continue. Big arrow against Rexa, and he's going to be oh, feigning death and the cocoon is in too. Nice. Nicely done by Toxic, but it's not over yet. Nah, they're still going for Rexa. <laughs> but he actually survives. And Junkrat is coming back now. Now you need to be careful that you're not getting flanked by Junkrat here. But it's a one level lead, and this is all of a sudden doable for Washed Up. <laughs> Team Russia definitely with a bit of a misplay there. But the game is far from being over. Far from being over. Russia still is ahead by an entire level and the experience in the top lane has not been caught by Washed Up. So that level lead is still an undeniable reality that we have there. And that could be all that's needed here towards the end. In terms of damage output, just look at Hanzo. Mainly with 62,000 damage. Hanzo's himself with 41k. Huh? about the level 20. Now here's the problem of course from Team Russia. Yes they're gonna get 20 but Washed Up is gonna get level 20 for the next objective very likely as well. So you can't even rely on that. <laughs> this is... Uh, this is honestly going to be a very very interesting last fight there. Russia can still easily win this but to be fair if they lose that if they lose this game, they have only themselves to blame here. They played such a fantastic early game and then just a bit of a judgment missed cause. But now they're being aggressive again. Yeah, of course they want the fort, they want to the keep. I like it, look at the aggression here. Urel already jumping in, Tyrell too. Tyrell is there, jumping out once again, gets a stun. Ooh, JPL! And they keep him alive with a sanctification. Cooldown burn, but that keep is down, and here comes maybe the kill. No, Urel still able to jump out. Might be getting stunned out again. Uh, barely gets away here. Vana Beer with a combo. Doesn't get the kill in there either, but they took the keep. And that's exactly what you need from the Russians at this point. Well done by them. So they use the advantage to at least get themselves a massive, massive lead on the top lane, taking down both structures. Washed Up is still behind, that hasn't changed, but they are not beaten yet. And they are still in range, they are still in range. Get the experience, get level 20 and then play around that. It's half a minute and that's all that you need. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, JBL! Ooh! <laughs> Close call bro, Close call right there. Uh, Wolves are gonna be back soon, but JPL still has to wait another 40 seconds until he has sanctification. Uh, Uriel gets jumped as well. Okay, has of course on level 20 now the Seraphim. Uses that, has to. Massive aggression coming from Russia again. And they go for, oh my god, Hazuops is dead. Oh my god, Hazuops is dead and now they are going straight for the fight here in the middle. It's not even a fight over the objective. They're going for JPL and he gets the kill against Misha but now not on, oh my, they get everybody. Holy shit. <laughs> the Russians, what looked like a little bit of a brawl, turns into a massive fight and they wipe washed up from the map 
and go straight for the core. Rip tire straight into the face here as well. <laughs> the Russian team once again with a mad aggression and it works out as Hasov finds himself isolated. He drops first and then they clean house. Team Russia with the lead in the best of five series against Washed Up. Dragonshire is the map. Team Russia, one of their favorite maps actually. You can guess, I give you three guesses who actually took the map and who was first pick, first ban. Washed up, losing the last one, obviously had the choice and they went and said, well guys, we're gonna go immediately into the first pick, first ban. And at this point, we're having Stork probably not getting his Anubarak again. There was a little bit of a discussion in the lobby just a second ago. Um, because, <laughs> well, <laughs> Mena was saying like, well, Smexy kind of hovered Anubarak as our second ban, but never actually clicked the button, and Stork is just like, oh, don't worry, don't worry, give me your Anubarak. Um, no, they were just like me, you know, kidding, of course, but Stork was saying just like, no, 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 you can give me your Anubarak, it's fine, it's fine, like, it's really okay. But obviously, it isn't quite, so, yeah, that's an interesting thing. Uh, the next thing is that apparently Banabia uh, is now has his birthday now, so it is apparently 20 minutes past midnight in Russia. It's a bit of a time difference, of course, which means that their games usually take place quite late. I guess they're used to it by now, but that means that yeah, Banabia has just started his birthday. So pretty big shout out to Banabia, happy birthday! Uh, if you currently watch that video on YouTube, make sure that you let him know there too. The video is of course going to end up a bit delayed on that, but he's still going to read the comments, I would assume. <laughs> he clicked the button this time, click the button. Alright, Mena has crown in this one, so they're actually banning out Tracer here on Dragonshire. I'm actually surprised that they let Rexa through again. That's probably something that uh, I find more surprising than anything else. And there's the ban against Anubarak because Stog is already saying, like, wait a second, if they don't ban it in Anubarak, they're probably going to try and pick it here too. So, uh, yeah, with that in mind, what do we have as the first pick for Washed Up? Again, it's a bit of a different map. Urel is, in my opinion, likely again for Eternal. He loves the hero, and it's a fantastic hero for this map. Mene immediately locks in Hanzo for himself here. Honor! Uh. And that should uh, bring us... Actually, I'm not quite sure. Like, normally you pick the support early. In this case, you still have Turanda open, where we've seen so much Malfurion and also Rhaegar on this map, particularly for Kolya Martian. Rhaegar offers you a bit more wave clear on those camps, and if you have good camp control around the Siege Giants and your own Bruiser camps, that helps you a lot normally. Uh, Ana, obviously, I mean, there's another huge, huge factor, especially if you rely on an early mage. So, this time they're not going into the earlier tank, which they oftentimes do. But instead, we're having Jaina picked and together with Jaina Anna. So there's a Nana boost. We could still see also a mage on the side of Washed Up, to be honest with you. I mean, yes, Hanzo is played by Mena, but Hanzo Ops plays, Mena, uh, plays Hanzo as well. Muradin for JPL. Uh, that guy just loves Muradin on this map, doesn't he? Diablo is open, Garrosh is open, Johanna is open. He's like, boys, it's Dragonshire. It's Dragonshire, it's Dragonshire, Muradin. We go Muradin. And okay, so they go Murden, and they have Tyrande, so Murden, Tyrande stuns. Just need a little bit more damage behind that. <laughs> I want to see if Rexa gets banned, because again, it is the Russians. You know that Toxic at this point wants Rexa. And this, for example, is also interesting to me. I would have expected Team Russia to ban on URL. Because I am personally convinced that Eternal will go URL if he gets her. Especially since that hero just caters towards the map so much. So uh, let's see what the ban is. Are we gonna see Rexa being banned out, or is it instead some frontline ban? Yeah, there we go. All right, all right, all right, right, right. Okay, Rexa gets banned. That personally makes me a little bit of a happy panda because it also shows. That they keep up with it. Ooh. Alarak and Leoric. Oh, Shai Swiffer. 
Ah, <sighs> Leo wants to clean again. I really want to see Leo going up against Zagara at some point. I mean, the attempt to clean the map is going to ma be made a lot harder. It's like a handicap when you're playing against Zagara and she gets that creep spread everywhere. It's just like such a chore. Whoever has to clean all that shit up after I came, like, whew, I don't envy them. There's the Dehaka. Okay, Dehaka over Urel and Junkrat. Fair enough. Dehaka, so that you have the global place and you control the macro aspect of the game. Okay. Heavy frontline commitment by Team Russia now. They're still needing a main tank. They have their toxic Leoric. This is actually one of the one of the strategies that they had a lot during Meta Madness, where they played so many times with uh, Leoric in the hands of Toxic, and they got insane value out of that strategy. It was actually insane. So, you know, what do we have for stock? So many options, oh, and he goes Imperius. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Imperius and Alarak together with Jaina. <laughs> oh, that already spells pain. So washed up, they're currently down one game in the best of five series. Let's see if the Russians can increase that lead, or if washed up is tying the series here. Let's head straight into Dragonshire. Game number two, washed up against Team Russia. On the left side, Smexy on Toranda, Eternal on the Haka for the global. We have JPL on Muradin, Mena on Hanzo, and Hazoops on Junkrat. On the right side of the map, and then on the other hand, Imperius played by Stork, with Alarak played by Falander this time. Kolia Martian for the Nano Boost playing Ana here, together with Jaina played by Banabir. The birthday boy, birthday boy Banabia. Uh, quad B, as we call him. Toxic on Leoric. Going into Elson's Renewal as the first talent. And let's see if that little brawl in the middle has already yielded the first kill of the game. Kind of doubted a bit, but yeah. That setup with all those stuns that we're seeing is still pretty fantastic. Stalk on the Pleb Mount again. The Poverty Horse, as it's also called. <laughs> and Toxic is just swivering away here. JPL in this Muradin. Really, it's always just fun to see JPL on this particular map just at home in on that Muradin. When they played with Dignitas, even when nobody else played Muradin, he was just always about the dwarf here. Always about kicking some ass. Making sure that he gets those Storm Bolts in. And he was actually one of the first few that started to go straight into that Storm Bolt talent on level 1 the entire time. We're not seeing this uh, this time. Third wind instead. Eternal in a bit of trouble at the top lane, but still able to get away here, trying to also get the drag in on the return, which he could not. But that, of course, would have been great, getting a couple of power shots connected from the towers. So, yeah, with uh, that said, we're actually seeing now still Leo holding the top lane here. Toxic is going to have that battle with the Haka the entire time. Early camp commitment already. And I mean, it's great. You have Jaina for the wave clear on the lanes in general. Imperius himself isn't really too shabby after his level 7 with the Holy Fervor either. But Bonapier, yeah, he has such a great wave clear, especially in the later stage of the game, that is pretty solid. So, that said. We're actually currently, uh, we have in the mid lane here, st <laughs> this could actually be the first one. This is going to be the first one. No! <laughs> wait, how did he get interrupted? Wait, 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 what? I mean, Stark was sitting there, but it looked to me for a moment as if he actually cancelled it. I had that lately in the game, actually, where I didn't even see it. There was an Owl Sensu, and for the life of me, I did not see that Owl Connect for the interrupt. And I was just sitting there, I was just like, wait, what just happened? Because it really looked to me as if he would just let it go, and I was like, okay, that can't be. That must be something that I missed here. But I mean, either way, um, Bana Bia currently sitting there. We have Kolya Martian still sitting in. And, yep, there's the kill against Hanzo at the bottom of the map right there. Nicely done. And, I mean, of course, you have, again, the setup with Imperius, and then you also have Farlander at the same time. Both of them, if one of them connects, the other one is usually going to hit too, especially if that lunge connects. Then you can always follow that up with a quick one. At this point, we're actually seeing, again, Toxic being dropped quite low here. Huh? Half HP for him, so there's a fountain up on the other hand. That's cool on that he definitely will have to use right now. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> it's like going in, like sneaking that in real quickly, trying to stack that a little bit. Just like zipping away there. <laughs> so far, so good. 
But it's a nice little early pressure play that they had from washed up trying to go for the Dragonite. I mean, again, he was trying to go for it. Smexy then getting interrupted on the on the Dragon kind of shot that short. But still, oftentimes you see plays like this even work out and if you are, if you can dart around that. In this case, it hasn't quite worked out. But now the Russians are trying to do the exact same thing. They're currently attempting to zone out JPL here. Polio Martian gets interrupted as the jump out, but they need to do a little bit more than that because he's already back on the point. And yep, there's the owl. So maybe even try and time that a little better, but that's a Dragonite. That is perfectly played here. They are playing at the top just with an even battle between these two, so they couldn't take it away. We have Alarag at the bot lane beating out Junkrat, and now we are actually seeing the play with Anna getting into the Dragonite as she channels it through, steals it away from the map, uses it more for the wave clear, and of course also draws a couple of resources to her. <laughs> Main with a nice jump. That's actually a really cool move because now the Dragonite just rush into two towers. That's a big problem how a lot of especially newer players lose the Dragonite value. They run into the middle here and get attacked by both towers. So normally you try to position yourself either at the side or you're waiting for minion waves to push through so that the Dragonite doesn't get attacked by towers and forts and then you get more value out of it. Even if you just keep it alive for the duration and use the Dragon's Breath for the wave clear on the waves that alone already gives you a huge amount of utility but oftentimes when you are looking at especially quick matches or newer players in general and you see them take the Dragonite they just don't really appreciate that and they move straight into the structures and get quickly taken out by them and lose most of the value that the Dragonite could provide so that little move from Hanzo baiting the Dragonite in deeper into the towers was actually a really cool one and helped them to defend against it quicker now, we have to admit though, this is still a super early Dragonite, so this wasn't going to do a lot of damage anyways, but it's still important to limit it to as little a number as you possibly have here. With that said, we're still seeing Team Russia with aggression on the map here. I mean, currently they're looking at a setup where they have a slight leading experience. It's nothing fancy, but they're taking the map objectives as well as the camps on the map, and that of course allows them to break through the wall again. Yeah, JPL is trying to zone them as quickly as he can, but the situation is still pretty much the same. We're going to see one of those towers fall pretty soon, actually falls right now. And that opens up the bottom, on, therefore also an access point to the fountain that they could take down. The rotations are still in. Holy Fervor of course now taken for Imperius, as already expected a bit earlier. But it's definitely a setup that you have to respect that they're running here. It's a lot of lockdown, a lot of burst damage, they have really good wave clear around Jaina, which we're seeing right here. Just taking that down with a blizzard, getting the Cone of Cold in, firing away and taking that camp pretty quickly with only two heroes here. Level 10 abilities, pretty much as a standard, I would still love to see from them Wrath taken, but in this particular lineup, I could see Stalk go either way, to be honest. How much value are you going to get out of a potential Wrath pick? Ooh, Falinder. Be careful for a moment here. If he gets pushed out, he's going to be in trouble. We have, of course, also on Alarak the Counter Strike here once again. Ring of Frost, by the way, with the Entomb could be really solid. That would be a really, really good setup here. If they can make that work. And <laughs> yeah, this. Oh, Barnabia! Oh! The birthday boy was a little bit optimistic there. He thought he had the slow in already, and no, not quite. I mean, it was a good thought. If he connects it, he's dead. Let's face it, if he connects it, he looks like a hero. He looks like a player. He looks like an absolute boss. If it doesn't connect, you look a little bit like a doofus. But, <laughs> I mean, that's the price of fame. I was just looking at it, I was like, is it my birthday? Is it my birthday? Is it an early present? Oh, uh, no. Uh, the Nexus is not really going to give him that today. But at the top lane, not only are they likely to get a kill, they actually get the fort as well. Great job. That's the second kill. That's the first fort falling. Solid lineup. And a nice rotation. Again. Well done. Oh, the combo and JPL jumps out, but still. Yeah, Breath actually chosen as the rogue ability, was used in this case too, but didn't connect properly, so Stork doesn't get anything there. There comes the Rip Tire, does some damage, but not enough. They can always move back to the fountain, or at least they should be able to. In comes Murder on the other hand, and he is just bodying Banabia. <laughs> Did you see that kill? <laughs> 
Anna gets bumped into the air and mid air gets actually taken down. <laughs> they they just wrecked her mid air. Oh, he didn't even know what was happening. He was just like, I'm flying. I'm dead. <laughs> Oh, that was great. Dragonite for washed up now as well. Uh, yeah, Anna will have to recover from this one. That was not only a kill, that also hurt the soul, to be honest with you. But yeah, the Dragonite goes over to washed up this time, thanks to the two kills that it just got in the mid lane. And this one is already a bit stronger, even though we haven't crossed the 10 minute mark yet. They might be able to get a fort out of this. So, yeah. Oh, 13 talents give us first of all the healing static for Muradin, one of the best synergies still. Healing static with a big clap 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 and then having the thunder burn on level 4, it is fantastic. It's so good in these big team fights what you can do with this. It was an attempt to go for a gank against the Haka top side, this time it didn't really work out. Hazops on the other hand nearly, <laughs> nearly ran into Stork's hands there. But the team is rotating to the bottom of the map to try and defend as much as they can as the Dragonite is attempting to push. Smexy on the case here. And so far they haven't really gotten a lot of Dragonite. It only has 8 seconds left. They might not even get that fort. Okay. I mean it's still even experience here but the structural position on the map is definitely in favor of Team Russia. Now. The one thing that you have to keep in mind is that the more the map opens up, the more the Haka can later on also capitalize on the global ability. And just open the map up a little bit more, work on the experience lead, and he will mitigate a lot of that catapult pressure that now comes through the top lane. So he can definitely do that. But we are now 10 minutes in, we have two kills against two, and both of the teams have so far been... I mean, they've shown a lot of respect for, the, for each other. They've not really played too aggressive yet. We had a couple of rotations that just homed in the one towards the top for the fort and the kill, uh, amongst others. But in general, it's not really quite that brawly style that I personally was expecting, especially given the lineup that Team Russia is playing here. So, yeah, well, with that said, they're taking... Again, the camp control is great. This is one of the reasons why I could have seen them go for Rhaegar too, just simply because they like they like to play this. They played Rhaegar, Greymane, and other heroes several times, but since they had access to Jaina already early on, they decided to go for Jaina, and then Ana is just the better pick. You can still get a lot of Rhaegar value in such a situation, but the Nana boost is such a great tool, and it makes perfect sense to prioritize that. There's the big arrow, only hitting one hero. Stark gets hit by every thing here by the way but he just eats it he just eats all the damage he's still in play and gets healed by Kolya Martian but he oh and there's the entomb the Haka ring baby ring is in but they can't get their kill both of them can't both teams are not able to get the kill in there there's a lot of cooldowns they were just traded like a huge amount of cooldowns they basically blew everything on stalk after he was the only one being hit by the arrow and couldn't make the play there but just look at that experience, Jay. I mean, they are just absolutely even in that regard. But the top lane fort holds, even though the fountain was taken out. 17,000 damage on Jaina, 21k on Hanzo. And now we're having the next Dragonite up for grabs as both of the temples have been activated. Okay. And the uh, level 16 talents on both sides now coming in. And obviously with that, stone form, elongated tongue. Great talents here for them to be taken. Also, now the melting touch. That is going to help with a lot of that burst damage that they're going to try and get out. So Jaina, who by the way went also into the, the roots here. With a chill. Okay. Ooh, Stork, this time he might actually fall. With the isolation everything else. <laughs> the arrow kill. Don't see that all that often. Big arrow kill coming in in two hits too, but everybody is just simply jumping away from it. Oh, the sleep against the Haka Eternal. Nice. Russia with a counter kill. The ring. And it connects with Muradin. And they're going for it. And they cannot get the kill. Oh, wait. Toxic can. Toxic and Alarak, the two of them jump deep and they get the kill there. Nice, nice, nice. I can't believe they just turned it around. After we've seen the arrow tom Well, 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 well. <laughs> Valenda, it's not over yet. Grenades, baby. <laughs> oh! <laughs> the owl. 
the big escape of 2019. The grenades, they literally took grenades and owls for each other. That's what just happened. Dodging everything, just moving around. One guy takes a grenade for the other one. The other one eats an owl. Here we see the same thing. No! <laughs> oh, Alarak is dead. The Dragon Knight is taken. Leoric nearly dies as he's about to jump on a grenade. And then even though the kills happened and ended in favor of Team Russia, we are actually seeing Washed Up take the Dragon Knight here. Holy cow. I mean, Koya would have died to the Owl earlier if Alarak wouldn't have taken it. And even before that, we just had him expose himself so many times, trying to get the angle to get the eels through. But what a setup. It was impressive to see, first of all, Russia coming back into the fight as it is. I mean, we started the entire fight with a Hanzo arrow confirming the kill against the Imperius, and then starting another two. It looked more and more like we would see multiple kills coming in, and instead it was just the Russians turning around and going for it. But yeah, that game is going wild. The poke that we're having from Hanzo and Junkrat is just insane. And <laughs> it's, it's showcased here the entire time. So now we're having the Dragonite still in play. They actually got the Dragonite. I mean, <laughs> they actually made it happen. Uh, so with that said, we're having now at the bottom of the map the defense again set up. But now, slowly and steadily, Washed Up is starting to take the lead in experience. And they have now taken down two of the forts, so they are starting to look pretty okay. I mean, let me have a quick look over at the uh, damage numbers here. Hanzo is expected. The poke damage that he has is of course like Monka, so he's at 48,000. But outside of that, still fairly even there. I mean, Leoric has 110,000 siege damage, Junker is sitting at 142k. But now, as you can see, the map is slowly starting. I mean, personally, it feels like the map is like starting to be a little bit more in the hands of Washed Up. Like, may they're making more of the decisions right now. That bottom camp was now taken by them again. That has traditionally been a camp that Team Russia has claimed a lot in this series. There was one previous time where they were trying to, or when um, Washed Up was trying to stack the camp with Siege Giants. But right now, it's more so Team Russia reacting than the other way around. And uh, the early level 20 talent, which was emphasize that again so 20 is on the other hand a big problem i would say contagion is great that's really gonna help but i'm a little bit afraid for them when i look at that buried alive i feel we're always ending up in that situation where we somehow get to a level 20 situation and we're just always talking about buried alive it's such a game-changing storm talent it's honestly br it's it's Bonkers. It is absolute carnage if you hit a proper one and if the damage follow-up is there. So a lot of the responsibility is going to hinge on the shoulders of Toxic again. One of the talents that I feel doesn't really or hasn't really given any big value yet was actually Wrath from Imperius. It hasn't really done as much as you would expect. If you have a stun set up as a follow-up, we've seen Stark make so many plays in the past just deliver the kills into the hands of his team. This time it's not quite working out that way. Now 10 seconds until the next objective is on the map. I'm not quite sure if Washed Up is in a position where they can capitalize on that. I highly doubt it. There's a big rotation going topside now to prevent that. So Toxic has actually scouted out what's happening here at the bot lane. He has seen all of this. So they know that there's no one around at the top that if anyone is around, it's only the Haka. So they made that rotation as a 3 format uh, just to make that play. And now we have 20. So now they're going to get 20 here, and now they can fight, but they can't stay too long here. Uh, still the vision. There's Alarak in the middle, and there's the level 20 talents. All right, now we're talking. There's a deadly charge. Here comes uh, the Valorous Pursuit. Oh, oh Fallen Dark. Oh, oh, nice reaction. Really nice play. Pushing that back out real quickly. They take over the bot lane. Uh, and now it's the Burial Life that really comes down to. And obviously the Nano Infusion. I mean, that alone is also really, really powerful here. I guess for uh, Jaina, you have now Ice Block, you have Blink, so you're going to be a lot safer when they're going to try and make the play for you. <sighs> but yeah. Alright. Making the play for Muradin. Stark is still there. Is he going to try and get the old through? Here's the Ice Oh, the ring! The Alara combo! Oh, kill for kill! Oh, the Alara combo was just sexy as hell. Barnaby is in trouble, has the ice block, but there's the combo against JPL again, and Barnaby is still alive. Mane is trying to change that, though. Leo was in the middle, 
and the problem of course is that they're needing to try and prevent that but the damage reduction is now incoming but toxic is eating a lot of these grenades here ah still a four versus four still looking strong here but of course they need to have some control back and it's really the dehaka factor that is screwing with them also because that global is worth so much at this point in the game Especially, of course, when you can just simply borrow to the other lane on uh, the other side of the map and claim one of the shrines. But Leo's going over. Oh god, this has to be. That has to be. Yeah, she's dead. She has no bolt anymore, and mate, Hazel just rips her apart with a rip tire. This could be the end. I mean, we are starting to get a lot closer to that. It's maybe not quite there yet. We are still four on the board, uh, but it should be a Dragonite. Sh well. Trying to buy the time here, and they're rotating back down. Behaka is now back and can use the global. Okay, but can they rotate up top again? I kind of doubt that, to be honest. He's making the transition now. Stalk is on the way, and he is actually going to claim that. Roughly at the same time, that Junkrat is going to go to the bottom. So they're actually buying a little bit more time. Huh. They're buying a little bit more time here to hold this for longer. But it's still going to be close. Eternal gets the damage. Muradin is here. The problem is everybody else is here as well. And they need to still rotate away from this. It's seven seconds until Jaina is back. They need to fight in the middle. I feel at this point they really need to think about rotating into the mid lane and just taking the fight there. Jaina is back and she has the rank. They have all the ults now. Yeah, and they're going mid lane. They have, they have to go mid lane right now. So we're having them moving in once more. Alright, Stormbolt actually misses. Can't put the damage on, and Jaina is there. Barnabia, the birthday boy. If he gets the ring, that's all that they need now. The Haka is still at the top side, but the fight down here. Land that buried alive. Land the ring, and you are in the home zone. Washed up, on the other hand, they are trying to play around the Haka. They are playing around the macro a little bit. They're still keeping him top lane. He can always burrow in. And the pressure is currently on Team Russia. They rotate Alarak back down and immediately move back. Yes, the fight is starting over here. Leo moving in. Damage reduction. He hits Taranda. Taranda is hit. He has the ring. And it only hits Muradin. But Smexy is so low and might die. Muradin dies first. And they're going for the Smex Master. Oh, but Falinda doesn't connect it. Falinda doesn't connect it. The massive barrage comes now. Again, oh my god, they found the Haka. They found the Haka, and Eternal has no way of escaping here. He has no way to get away from this. Ether oh god, Alarak is down. Hanzo murders Alarak, but the Haka is still dead. It's still a two for one trade. It's still a two for one trade, but Hanzo can just poke them into the next century at this point. Ooh. Topside, Stalk, Stalk sitting there, Stalk doing this thing. And at the bottom of the map, there's still the defense for washed up, and they're not even making the play. They're taking the camp instead. They're knowing that they most likely won't be able to do anything. You have to run against you with the stun, with the owl. You have the poke from Junkrat. How are you going to take the Dragonite right now? Simple answer, you don't. You get pot pr uh, bot pr uh, top pressure. Cannot pulls pressuring in. And actually, they're rotating heroes over there too to take another camp. It's a really smart choice by them. They want to get the keep itself. I love that Mana scouts that out right away. Mana scouts it out immediately. But now we have on the bridge of death a double camp about to move in. How do they deal with that now? The bot lane is also under pressure. And I guess that Alarak is going to take care with it once that he moves in. But the keep is going to take some damage. So now all of a sudden, they're rotating into the middle. They're rotating to the bottom. So Washed Up is sitting there saying like, damn, we need to defend top lane. But if we do, how do we defend against the middle? Answer, they go topside and they're trying to reclaim this one. Jaina's there. You can't go alone, Bay. Girl, you can't be alone there. Oh, but it's a 3-4-2. The ring and the kill against Hazu Ops is not happening. Wait, what? Hazu what? Hazu actually gets away the delivery system. And George, Jaina, oh! JPL, the fight, the combo, and the Haka is dead. But so is Anna, so is Toranda, and Hazorps is still trying to escape here. Mane is also on the run. Mane on the run, and ah, Falena moves away. Oh, oh, the Stormbolt. Oh, what the hell? Oh, oh, oh the lockdown. 
Jaina locks down JPL and prevents the kill against Alarak and kills Junkrat. The keep at the top lane has in the meantime fallen. Guys, this is getting nuts. I can still not believe that Junkrat actually survived for this long, that Hazel was able to move out in the first place there. He should have died instantly. Now they're trying to go for the Dragon Knight and it gets interrupted again because Mena is taking the bottom of the map. Mena has taken the bottom of the map. That maniac. That absolute maniac. Double catapults on the core. Make it a triple. Triple catapults are firing in. Muradin is on the way up to the top. Trying to buy them more time. And they need a little bit more. But the core is taking damage. The core is currently taking damage. It's down to 94%. 90%. It's not a lot. It's 10% that you just lost out on. It's not the end of the day there. But the keep is down. The core has lost a few. And still there's no Dragonite. 24 minutes in. Team Russia is still in a situation where they could lose this. Now there's the pressure. The pressure is there and Junkrat isn't there yet. But he will be soon. And the Haka's on the move. Stalk. Stalk with the attempt to go for the play again. And he wants to connect it. Arrow comes in. And there's the Buried Alive. Missing completely the isolation on Jaina. And that's the end of her. Jaina is dead and washed up might just have done it. They go for Toxic. Toxic kept alive by Anna. Oh, but Azulab shows no mercy. Ah, oh, Mena. Mena with a kill actually at the end there. Mena with a kill and now the Dragonite is all of a sudden a big reality. A massive back and forth here. The entire time, massive back and forth, over and over again. They're trying to go for the Haka. They don't even know the Haka is there. But now they see him. There's the lunge, the setup, the sun. No way, no way. What? What? He gets the essence through, and that has to be. Now that Ana is dead, that has to be game. They just lost Ana. They just lost Doc. That has to be game here. What an unbelievable back and forth. I mean, are you shitting me? JPL gets that Dragonite. How is this happening? The entire time. First it's washed up. That looks like they get the Dragonite. Then it's Team Russia. Neither can. And then it swings back into favor of washed up. As they are finally able to get those kills in. Once they took Jaina down. It started with the Mist and Tomb on Leoric. Toxic. He missed it. He missed the Bury Alive. And now with 25 minutes on the core. Do you even have to watch the fight down here? Jaina goes down. Alarak as well. As if it matters at this point. The core falls because the Dragonite is murdering it, takes it apart, and that is the tie in the series. Washed up takes it on Dragonshire. Game number three, everybody. The best of five series continues, and we're heading into our third game right now. Washed up in Team Russia, a massive back and forth the entire second game on Dragonshire, which is, by the way, one of the best maps of, of uh, Team Russia. It's so good for them that it gets oftentimes banned out against them because they love to play here. Quite often, when the map isn't banned, they actually pick it as the first map in the series, and so that didn't happen. Now we're heading straight into game three because, I mean, it was just back and forth. You had Team Russia trying to claim a Dragon Knight. They got pushed back, washed up, takes over. Then Russia somehow delays it for another 30 seconds to bring the heroes back they just lost. Take down two heroes off, washed up, and the entire thing continues again. They fought over that Dragonite, what felt like 10 minutes, and then towards the end, it's a mist and tomb and a fantastic isolation from Eternal that decides the whole thing in favor of washed up. They take a 25 minute Dragonite, and it just finishes the game. Now we have Ana banned out. <laughs> I can't blame them there. The nano boosts are annoying. And then you have washed up, of course, also dealing with the entire healing power that Ana had there. So definitely changing the ban pattern a little bit. Zaratul and um, Maiev get still banned out here. Do you ban an Uberak? Or is it another hero that you focus on? That Imperius was pretty annoying as well. <laughs> so is that Leoric. That toxic, toxic Leoric. Uh, Diablo is also bad. There's so many good tanks out right now. There's, li there's seriously so many Every good tanks out. Honor. And look at Honor. that. They're switching yes. their pattern up. They pick Hanzo first. So that Mena doesn't get him anymore. <laughs> Finally done with Mena just like sharpshootering around the entire time here. 
Ah, now, for the boys in blue. That Turanda is still up. Still a good pick for them. Likely to be taken too. And Jaina and Nubarak instead. Okay. They're going to be happy no matter what they get in terms of support. Turanda's fine. Malfurion is okay. Rhaegar is also okay if they need to. But yeah. Ah, the series just make me happy, like seriously. Like the first one that we had today was just mm, so good. Granite Gaming versus nothing left, great match. Then we looked at the second one, it's like, ah, yeah, Granite Gaming, uh, sorry. Team Russia, really good these days, but washed up, they're just so strong. And then we see this, like two great maps. There's Taranda, there's Banabir, our birthday boy on Junkrat again. I wonder a bit already what Russia is going to ban, if they're trying to delete some of the supports here. Again, they could ban out, let's say, uh, Malfurion, for example. To be honest, what I would love, what I don't think is going to happen, because the support in comparison to others has just fallen off, go a bit old school. Give me that Stukov, give me that silence after the engage. We all know it's not happening, but it would be awesome. It would actually be great, but again, I would uh, not expect that. Even with Malfurion banned, I can rather see them go Rhaegar. Alex Straza, one of the two. Both would be good here, but yeah, that are those old school times when you just were darting in, the silence came in, you get the viral and reaction on level 13, lock the target down. We had Admira Gonzalez shat himself on the hero for Zealots. God, that were good. those were good times. Katowice, 2018. Yeah, there's Urel and there's the bird. Falstad chosen for Infernal Shrines here and Urel of course with the extra armor provided for Nuburak when she jumps in old school Korean style. Eastern Clash 2018, the second one. That's when the Koreans used that combo over and over and over and over again and proved once and for all that Chinese players or Chinese teams just don't learn. Was never banned out until all of the Chinese teams were eliminated. And then finally someone started to pick up and said like, huh, let's me think about that. It looks like we actually should ban out one of the two or take it away. Talking about banning stuff and taking it away. Remember for Meta Madness? Stitches, hungry for more, level one, 9,000 hit point hero. Looks like Stork has actually started to take a bit of a liking to that particular style. Stitches Turanda being played with a thrall for the lockdown. Okay. All right, I see what you're doing. And this should be Rhaegar, unless they go wild. Alex, Alex, Rhaegar, Alex, Rhaegar. Rhaegar, yeah, it's Rhaegar. It's Rhaegar, he's gonna fight to the last breath, and we are gonna observe to the last breath. So ladies and gentlemen, game number three coming up, Infernal Shrines with Washed Up against Team Russia. Game number three. The series is tight here in Division S. Washed up against Team Russia. And on the left side, we have Mena on Jaina. The man himself. The master of mages for Washed Up. Smexy on Rega. JPL on the Nubarak. We have Hazo, Ops on Falstad, and Eternal playing Ural again. On the right side, with his hungry for more, Stitches, played by Stork. He wants those 9,000 hit points back. Barnaby on Junkrat, Toxic on Thrall, Falender on Hanzo, and Kolya Martian is playing Toranda. This is going to be pretty amazing. This is going to be a lot of fun here. I, I love it every... Ooh, <laughs> okay. Uh, JPL. <laughs> Get wrecked, little beetle. A noob got wrecked. So, yeah, with that, we're having a uh, uh, first kill also for Stork and his boys here. And that is actually a pretty insane setup already as it stands. I mean, obviously, when you're looking towards Stitches, we're talking a lot about the hit point pull right now because it was so much fun to see him during Meta Madness with this. But at the same time, the original combo is obviously hook into stun, which is exactly what we just saw. So it is pretty, pretty awesome if those are coming through and if that threat of a hook is just always there. The question still remains, how is that going to look in the later stages of the game here? But yeah, Hazo is already threatened. For example, the Xayah wall here is already under observation with the entire time Farlander shooting. And then on the same time, that hook, of course, being threatened. In they come, and that's a dead throw. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
<laughs> the exterminators are in the house. And well, Thrall or Orcs might not be quite insects, but he was taken out like one. He was burned to a crisp within a second. He didn't even know what happened. He just got completely shot on in the last fight. <laughs> they just jumped on him and yeah. In good old Duke Nukem 3D session or uh, version, they just like shut down his throat. That's pretty much what happened there. Ah, <sighs> Duke Nukem 3D. That was such a great game. That was such a fun game. I miss stuff like this. I really do. Especially that co-op mode. Good times, good times. Seven stacks already on stock with his level one turn. We're gonna find out how much he can get this time. I think the last time, did he end up with more than 50? I think he did, right? Like, it was pretty bonkers. The interesting part is, of course, what happens when you win the objective a couple of times, because then you get the extra ones too, and that is just insane. The build for House Ops, in the meantime, going for the wingman trade, so you want to try and get your opponent's shaman camp every now and then, but even just getting your own helps you a little bit with that. Aggressive build from uh, Anubarak too, so going straight into the Underking into Subterranean Shield probably gonna come in next but yeah Toxic gets attacked topside Eternal doesn't even have to dodge a uh, hook doesn't even have to dodge the hook there in the mid lane that with all the camps taken and the map slowly started to be painted a little bit red we're having the pressure against Kolya Martian who obviously doesn't have the best wave player here but still they're doing it as best as he can the first shrine is active and uh, both of the teams are obviously going to be looking towards those level 7 talents as that is still in play. But first of all, Stalk is in trouble and that trouble ends with him dying. Stitches just wanted to play and he didn't get any of that. Uh, I don't know, the entire time I just have Duke Nukem voice lines in my head right now. Good old Duke would have dropped stitches and gone straight for the damn, I'm good. So, yeah. That. Oh, <laughs> if that wolf connects, Hazu is dead. <laughs> if that wolf connects, Hazu is dead. That's like chicken for dinner. But no, 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 no. Hazu able to move away. Yeah, but that's always that's always a scary moment. It's like, please get away, please get away, please don't get away, please don't connect, please don't connect. I was like, yeah. That's a, that's a bad one. Uh, one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite voice lines from Duke Nukem. You're an inspiration for birth control. That was way too many of these people around these days, if you ask me. But as we're talking about that, we have the fight actually starting up to the top lane and massive amount of stack quests here. With Toxic, of course, also going into his level four quest, trying to get that stack during the fight. Barnabia is low. Barnabia gets jumped on and barely jumps out himself. But Eternal nearly got him. But what we are seeing being got is that quick old Punisher here. And that bad boy is already full in arcane mode, so we're going to see a couple of arcane sentries and they're opening the wall at the side here. And there's not even a jump being triggered because nobody gets close enough to that wall. Nobody is insane enough to get close to that thing. There's the jump, there's the follow-up, and they're trying to make the play for Stalk again, but this time it doesn't work out. But they can definitely start pressuring that fort. Great attack here by Washed Up. Russia might have taken game number one, but the Washed Up has definitely smelled blood in the water here. They are taking fort number one with only the first move here. Nice setup. First Punisher, first fort. That's how we want to start a game. Four stacks in the meantime by Thrall on the level four. Hazorps is using the wingman and actually provides the vision to get a few of the hit points taken away from this one. In case you didn't know, once you take it, you just provide vision with the spell of the fountain and then the Kazura camp attacks that as well. So now, Toxic down to the bottom of the map, still starting to defend here, completes his quest too, so that was an important one, can be a little bit more thoughtless with those wolves and spam them out. The cooler reduction alone is a glorious thing to have, but mana reduction in terms of cost is of course fantastic and there we have the setup look at it the ring for mana the mage master himself is going to try and make the place here this is by the way the map where uh, washed up absolutely obliterated coming through people are arguing that the combo that killed coming through team composition in this game was also the reason why they disbanded that's how hard they got wrecked in that fight 
You know, it was seriously one of the best wombo combos that I've ever seen in a professional, semi-professional game. I mean, that gust into a corner with an apocalypse and Ring of Frost coming afterwards, leading to a full team wipe. Oh, that was bonkers. That was absolutely insane. And they have false that again. They might not be able to rely on the apocalypse, but if that setup comes to pass once more, Mena is not going to sit there and be like, nah, I don't know. He's going to absolutely murder people again. Mena is one of these ruthless French killers that just seem nice because they have that weird accent. But then when there's an opportunity, they just take your lunch money and leave you sitting in the corner there. They take your lunch money and they, they take everything. The car, your house, your lunch money. And because they're French, they also take your girlfriend. So at the same time though, uh, talking about French people, JPL is trying to go for Toxic and that looks pretty much like a death thrall to me. I'm not quite sure about you guys, but yep, that's a dead war chief right there. And with a cocoon on stitches, I'd say that's a dead stitches too. Nice gust, isolating the hero completely. And Mena comes in from the side, and yeah, that's the end of that. Double kill, and it looks impressive. It honestly looks impressive. It is a very, very strong setup that we're seeing from them, and they are playing an absolutely fantastic setup with us. So, good coordination, good kills, play after play, and... Yeah, they're just delivering. It just seems that it's really difficult for Russia to find a good opening here. They got a hook earlier into a stun and that led to the first kill. But outside of that, how do you actually make the plays here? If they connect a good arrow, then it's a start. But right now they're losing too many heroes as they're getting isolated. The rotations of Washed Up are too crisp. They're fast. They get a couple of quick hits in. And that's all they need to do. So right now, this is an important fight for Team Russia. They're behind the talent. Not that they even cared in the past at least that is, but can they actually win the Punisher? Because if they can't, they are in trouble. The top lane alone is already an issue. It's pushing with that camp. And there comes the Gust, and uh, well, there comes the Cocoon, Sundering as well, by the way. They can still turn it around against Stitches, and that's what they're trying to do. A ring, and that's the kill, even with the arrow. Yep, even with the arrow being thrown out. And the rip tire gets taken out too, so that doesn't help them either. So now the top lane is pushing. He's soon gonna push in here, uh, making the play for the next Punisher. And I gotta just say, washed up, they play clean. They play it clean for sure. This is looking extremely solid by them. They have a draft that just works out for them. Has, has Max even landed an Ancestral? Have they needed an Ancestral? We might have seen one in the first fight around level 10, but up to that point, I mean, they always seem fine. They always have, of course, Eternal and his ult there. Now they're taking camp after camp. They're moving through the bot lane where the fort is already eliminated. They want to go for the keep. And they're just playing it clean. There's no other word for it. You have crisp decision making. You have good shot calls. You have them moving onto the lanes, dropping Thrall whenever they see them. Good cocoons against Stitchers, keeping him up as a backup option, even if the original kill doesn't happen. And it's just a super coordinated game that they are playing here. And it seems that Russia doesn't have an answer to that. Now they are the comeback masters, we shouldn't forget that, but they need to have that comeback starting soon or they're gonna be in trouble. They're losing that keep now. And Hasops is still in the middle with false that trying to burn down that particular, yeah, he actually flies in as they're going again for the gust after the cocoon, the big isolation. But this time Thrall survives. It was a good hook from Storm. It was a really good hook. That might be exactly what they need. And the combat masters, are they making it happen again? Ancestral gets used. And there's the end of the bur uh, Wait, Hazel. Oh my god, if Hazel would have survived again. Yo, yeah, and there's the double kill. It was nicely done, actually. I mean, again, this is still a bit hurting, but they were fighting here in the middle. False and Junkrat. Then as the cocoon happens, cocoon happens here, false that flies down here, gusts top. Really cool setup. There's so many setups where you can have good cocoons. You can either do it within a tomb, you can do it within a cocoon, you can do it with a gorge. The idea is always the same. You have an isolation, one isolation ability, can also be a containment risk, and then you gust the rest of the team away to get the uh, kill. But stalk with that hook in that last engage, that was actually pretty sweet. Because the kill didn't happen, but there's still six kills against three, and that brings us to the level 16 talent advantage. And that's obviously for the next uh, for the next objective going to be super important and similar to what we see on Volskaya. Here, what do we have? Zip, no fountain, no fort, and here's still everything available. 
So that is a problem because yeah, the situation is not really great for Team Russia here. Their goal is to get level 16 at this moment. Stitches, by the way, has by now 24 stacks on his level 1. That means that we're having an extra 700 hit points roughly for Stitches. He's currently sitting at 6,200 hit points. Uh, I mean, we can compare that to Anubarak, but obviously Anubarak is a little bit less hit point heavy just in general because he has that mobility too, so it does only tell you so much. He's currently at 4,100 max. Oh, yeah. And so it connects again. Quite as much as we're hoping for yet. And they go for the fort again. And let's not forget that that global in the form of false that is also another huge asset here, obviously, for Washed Up. We haven't really focused on it too much yet in this game, but it's obviously the more the map opens up, the bigger of an asset that particular playstyle is right now. Another thing that I want to point out is that Mena hasn't even completed his baseline yet because we've seen very crisp and clean kills and no prolonged fights where he could dish the damage out. But once that he has that and has Ice Block available, that's going to be another big power spike for him. So there's definitely a lot of these things happening. And Tyrande has only gotten four stuns so far. And that's in 11 levels. Just because it just didn't work out the way. There's the 16 now. That's a big one. So now at least there's even talents. But Falstaff is already starting to take the walls down. And that's important. So that you have your opponent doesn't have vision. And you can play around that lack of vision. A lot. And talking vision. Stork is actually double checking the top now. Uh, double checking the top left here. Yeah. Alright, JPL, is he face checking? Yep, he indeed is, but there's no punishment. Oh, and as I say, the hook connects, but so does the stun. And the wolf doesn't. And they go for internal again. Alright, and Falstad is pushing the bot lane out. Again, this is a problem. It's two catapults, but the third one's coming in. And now Hazu wants the next wave. He wants the next minion wave, while his team is still buying a little bit of time over here. Yeah, and uh, again, that might not kill the... Oh, man! <laughs> Jeez, calm down, dude. Okay, there's the hook. Mane might actually die. Sundering here. Gets the ice block. Ice block is there. And Mane is dead. But he still makes it a two for one. And in the meantime, Hazops is starting to end the game. Hazo Ops puts serious damage onto that core. Junkrat goes down, but at the same time, the core is at 60%, 50%. Hazo Ops might actually be able to end it. With three catapults, Hazo might. Hazo not only might, Hazo is ending it right now. Hazo is ending the game. He casts him away, and he takes the victory for his team. That's game, and that's washed up in the lead in the best of five. GG, and great play here, especially on the macro level from washed up. Tomb of the Spider Queen, game number four, everybody. We are heading into potentially the last map of the series, but we could once again just go the full distance here. Washed Up has slowly started to find their rhythm here. They're currently looking at a 2-1 lead over Team Russia, and Tomb of the Spider Queen is the choice. Let's actually, <laughs> with a ban on Tracer immediately. First Overwatch hero, banned. Actually, I've seen a severe lack of Genji lately. He doesn't really get played a whole lot. Instead, it's usually Zeratul and Mayev that gets hit by the ban hammer. And Zeratul gets taken out once more. There's the Ana ban. Can't really blame them, right? With all those combos with Jaina and Ana. It's getting really annoying here. First pick goes, by the way, over to Washed Up. So I would still assume that Mayev is going to be banned out right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mayev. My F it is. So, with that said, what's going to be the first pick here? Again, things are changing a little bit as you're on Tomb of the Spider Queen, but generally speaking, that Jaina is going to be good no matter where you take her. So, yes, Jaina could have been a Tyrande, I would assume. Might have been something along on Nubarak. But honestly, if they want to play Stitches again, Team Russia is probably going to do it here, because this is the map where you have the best chances to really stack the level 1 quest. But Stork has a chance and a shot at getting a Nuborak, so he says like, yeah, you know, you know what? Stitches might be awesome, but this is better. And here comes Falander again on uh, Alarak. Insta. Insta. -le. Okay. So that also is very likely going to lead us into a triple, triple frontline again. I kind of assume they're going to ban Li Ming here. Um, 
I really, yeah, there's a Jaina, by the way, uh, sorry, the Turanda as well. I just talked a bit about Turanda, and I more or less expected them to take it away now that Jaina was there. Now we have that Garrosh that I wanted earlier on, uh, um, on the first map. And uh, from the perspective of washed up, I mean, right now, what do you ban? I personally would say you either ban out Gul'dan, or you ban out Li Ming. There's not a massive amount of wave clear ready yet for Team Russia. I would be, on a teamfight level, I would be more worried about Li Ming, but then when it comes to wave clear, that Gul'dan is definitely a lot scarier. And it's likely that we're going to see a third melee ha uh, coming into play from, from uh, Team Russia. So I guess you could ban out Leo if you wanted to, but there's too many options. Alright, they go instead for the support. They're just taking after Anna, Malfiori in away, but that's going to be an easy Rhaegar on the last pick. And here's Rexa. And Junkrat taken. Okay, Rex on the bot lane. And Collier Martian has played so much Rhaegar. I would be kind of shocked if we don't see Rhaegar now in this setup. So, yeah. Let's see. I mean, that setup is already solid. Urel gets banned out because Eternal plays her so much. I uh, mean, for good reason. But with this, you could now. I mean, yeah, there's the Leo. And cooldown. Double mage. Double mage. And that should be Rhaegar. Well, they're hesitating a little bit. I mean, it was his go-to in most of the cases. If you want to go for something else... I no. will fight to my last breath. It would have been really surprised me if there's anything else there. Again, there's nothing really that compares to it and nothing really where he has shown a priority to go for it. So, yeah, with that, ladies and gentlemen, the stage set, two more Spider Queen. Let's head into it. Game number four, potentially the last one of the series. Let's see if Washed Up can finish it or if Team Russia is claiming victory and forces the fifth map. Game number four, washed up in the lead against Team Russia. Eternal on Leoric here and two more the Spider Queen. JPL on Garrosh. We have Main on Gul'dan and Hazuops on Jaina with Smexy on Turanda. And over to the right side, <laughs> a lot of preference picks once again. Stalk on Anubarak, Toxic on Rexa, Banana Beer on Junkrat, we have Collier Martian on Rhaegar, and Falander on Alarak. Yeah, it's a nice setup. But we have again Toxic on his, on his Rexa. The double mage is scary. I got to be honest here. Yeah, it is a scary setup. The amount of burst damage that you have with this is pretty insane. Misha experiences that already firsthand. Doesn't fall because the team is ready. But, yep. It's just that toxic Rexa that we have there that just does so much work. This time the sun gets dodged though. JPL is also controlling the movements of Al um, Anubarak a little bit better. I mean, we talked about this in the past quite a bit. If you are up against an Anubarak as... Uh, uh, sorry, if you are up against Garrosh as an Anubarak, you have a much harder time jumping in deep because you're always in that spot where you could be pushed back in. So look at JPL, for example. If you're at any point seeing Anubarak diving in here, it doesn't matter from which angle, then all that JPL has to do is he throws him into the opposite direction and then Anubarak the can't move out. In this case, it doesn't work quite because it's a south-north orientation. And if it's from the left to the right, east-west, then you can even just move, throw him into the rest of the team. That's a huge problem. So it forces Anubarak to play a bit safer since, yeah, he needs to do exactly what you might see here, burrow out if it's getting problematic. In this case, Dog can walk away and doesn't have to burn the cooldown, but this is roughly the setup. If that guy gets too close to you and throws you in, you want to have that cooldown ready. So if you go in, you have to connect and you have to be sure that your team follows and it makes things a lot harder. Yep, there you see exactly that dynamic. If, if that happens after he moves in, he's dead. So it forces Anubarak to play much, 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 much safer than he really wants to. Because Anubarak is one of these engaged heroes that just wants to go deep, wants to go ham, wants to set up kills. That's kind of his, his big thing. At the bottom of the map, we're still seeing Eternal going up against Toxic. I mean, the drain against Misha is definitely something that he can rely upon. Obviously, top side, we're seeing Mena stacking as much as he can. And he's already sitting at 8 stacks on this level 1. That Echoed Corruption, you kind of want to have it ready around level 16 at the latest, just so that you get the Ruinous Affliction value here too. With Austin's Renewal, it makes also the Auric a little bit less vulnerable at the bot lane here. 
also helps of course once that he dies if they can trade his life for someone else it's always going to be a good trade for them they're kind of controlling the turning points for most of it but they haven't really turned in anything yet it was only through the bot lane and we always talk about of course that camp and here comes the big sneak in for the camp to be taken and with everyone else being busy right here i guess they are going to take it house ups is so low on mana that he can't even stay here so yeah those siege giants are freebies right now that's a really nice rotation. Very, very fast save. The Owl comes to lay two. They have already taken it. It's not the biggest set, but what's still. Interesting also that we have the Hungry Bear taken here. Okay. So a little bit more self-sustained for Misha herself. No Hunter-Gatherer this time. And also no Animal Husbandry. Instead just focusing on the survivability of Misha with all the burst damage that comes in. Okay. 12 stacks for Mane in the meantime. Ah, he wants to go quickly with that. <laughs> and they go for Misha. The bear goes down. All the damage, all the experience, all the stacks, it all counts. So they're going for it. Uh, in the meantime, Mane is just sitting topside the entire time. Mostly alone, has to be careful. If you are alone at the top, you have to be a bit isolated there. You could push down at the bottom, but obviously with the spell hour are gone, the remaining parts of the camp don't really last too long either. But when it comes to the turn-ins, there's not really anything that both of them are currently doing. They are just sitting, waiting around. Toxic is the only one that turns in, and Bana Beer, so Team Russia is slowly starting to sneak their own turn-ins in. This is the risk on the map. If you don't turn in, then you're always risking that your opponent is eventually going to get some kills, and then of course you are ending up in a really problematic situation because you lose the gems. So at this point, JPL, if he gets the 18 in, that would already make them a lot safer here. And he barely gets interrupted. He's not able to get the, rid of those. It's always annoying when it's on the tank, because the tank can also zone for the rest of the team as they're trying to turn in. So if someone else has to zone for you, it becomes that really awkward position where it's like, yeah, I kind of want to make sure that you get that delivered, but at the same time, you're supposed to zone for me, not the other way around. Like, I don't know. But yeah, so with this, we're now having again that setup and once more the move out. First of all, the stun comes a bit too late, but it's also really difficult to hit the timing properly because Stalk just has nothing to do but burrow out. But it shows again why he now has to be so careful and why he can't just simply engage in when he doesn't have vision. Min is, by the way, just firing it up with the Echo Corruption. He had 20 stacks for him. So he's really rushing it now. Doing exceptionally well with that. Stack process on uh, Garrosh is also looking pretty solid, looking at 13 right now on his Warbreaker. Uh, cooldown reduction would of course be fantastic for him here if he gets it this early. Uh, same time, so we have both of them just still eyeing that turn in and so far it looks like we're going... Uh, Main is sitting at 24. So far it looks like Team Russia has a good chance of completing the first turn in here. 17 on Farlander. That's most of it, but we're still seeing Rexa also holding 11 at the bottom. Eternal himself is sitting at 22, and Eternal is getting ganked now. Eternal, okay, moves out immediately. They get some damage on him, but not much more than that. He can't just die. If you have this many, you can't die. You need to stay alive. It's usually the solo laners that hold the most at the start, and then uh, you need to make sure that you deliver that. And here's the delivery right there. Farlander completes it, and that is the first web we were wave for the Russian team. And with that, it will become a question of wave clear. <laughs> and if we have one thing on washed up side, it's wave clear. With the echoed corruption, with well, Turan, uh, sorry, um, Leoric, with also Jaina, you have a lot of that wave clear. And you're also having a lot of hero clear that's being used to put Stark down to 40% uh, HP again. But you also have on the other side that nasty, pesky Australian over there. That Junkrat needs a lot of damage. He's still able to also get a lot of work done with those grenades that he's always firing through. Look at Mane, by the way. 29 stacks by now. We're only six and a half minutes into the game. Actually, really, really good from him. But yeah, decent defense in the middle. It is solid, actually. Really good. That's completed at 6.30 for Garrosh. And Barnab, yeah. Ooh, dude, like, you're low. Holy Martian comes in and helps him out, but this is another wall where only a bit, little bit has uh, fallen down to the bottom. Yeah, last wave goes through. Eternal is having 32 gems. They need to be careful now. Again, this is the moment where you just can't die. And Team Russia is looking for that kill. They want that kill right now. They have level 10. If they can push in with a nice good cocoon and drop someone there, that would be fantastic for them. 39 now already delivered. 
and the third like he is just sitting down here he's like a little bit on the platter everybody looks at him and is like boy if we kill him if we can just kill that guy Ah, nice connect, uh, and this time an Uberak is dead. They're <laughs> actually dropping everything on him. The thing is, he wouldn't even have survived that because of the Entomb. Even if the Entomb doesn't uh, completely encircle him, what you can still do is just block his escape path with one of the walls and then drop him down. So all of a sudden, an Uberak is dead, which is literally the first kill of the game. And we're seeing the turn in from the blue team. So that means that we're having now another big push coming through. That's a great setup here again. Well done. Uh, but can they really get a lot of value out of this? It's the second wave, so it's a little bit later. Should give it a bit more value. Ooh, going for Misha again. Good stacks, and that's another quick kill. Nice. Bear down for a couple of seconds. Makes the bot defense so much harder. 33 stacks for Mena. Use that tool, of course. We're having uh, Leo in the mid lane right now. 37 gems for him. 40 in a second. So, yeah. Uh, he can't, again, he can't die. You can't let Leo die now. Especially with nobody being around to help him out. Here comes the engage, and he moves away. Yeah, of course, Eternal knows that they're coming for him. I mean, uh, where else would they go? But no, we're having the bot lane obliterated. Nice. I love that they're actually checking this. But here they come, and they are flanking. And that might be not quite the engage that they wanted here. JPL is trying to be the only one that dies. Hazos is low. Cocoon on Turanda. They're going for Hazu, and Hazu is dead. Gets the ring out. Oh, the horrify! Oh! But JPL, even with a taunt, he dies. That's a double kill. They can't get the counter kill because of the Ancestral. And now they're losing Leoric, aren't they? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Eternal. And... He... Oh my god! <laughs> Smexy. Smexy, you little madman. <laughs> 42 gems and they actually keep Leo alive. Not bad. And the web weaver at the bottom of the map has actually done solid work and broken through the entire wall. So yeah, they're behind in experience a little bit. The blue team. They don't have the level 13 talents yet, but to be fair, that was a pretty decent setup still. Maybe losing those heroes wasn't quite needed, but Eternal staying alive, <laughs> that was the important one. Smexy was using absolutely everything here. Using the Eloons chosen the entire time, making sure that he gets also, of course, the heals out. Now they're making the next big fight happen. JPL, there's a tomb, is sexy as hell. The stun, but there's no damage. Yeah, it's cooldown heavy. If you play double mage, you're very cooldown heavy. Talking about double mage and cooldown heavy. Uh, rip. <laughs> 78 points <laughs> and they kill the bear again and JPL survives too <laughs> this is actually bananas <laughs> oh okay Tyrande at least falls Farlander is at least saying okay I got enough of this shit we're gonna at least kill someone here I'm not gonna run around and always look how these guys escape with 50 hit points <laughs> it's just not happening anymore so Alarak goes in and says like okay I'm done drops the surge and just make sure that they're at least getting one kill secured and that's the one against Tyrande Mena by now has also quite a while ago completed his level 1 quest, so that's pretty good. Just have a quick look here at the damage output. I mean, a sleep on 23,000 just draining the bear the entire time. And Eternal is looking strong with that. 21,000 for Mena as well, but there's the Web Weavers again. And that's gonna be a stronger statement if we made. Hazops, of course, wants to get the Blizzard through. But up to the top. Stock, look at how aggressive that guy is again the entire time. Yeah, that one's gone. Uh, one is at least down. Mainem should be able to defend this one at the top side here. I mean, he gets insane damage output in with all of this. But the battle in the mid lane, this is a completely different story. JPL just barely gets out before Barnabia is going to start pushing him back in again. But this is the only fort that they got. Both of the other two were already defended. And now on even talent, they can make that play. And they're actually getting Misha. Misha is gonna fall. That's that already gone. Ah, and they're moving back. If they would have tried to move in a little bit farther, Eternal would have probably just cut in the path of retreat off with another Entomb. But they're now making the rotation bot side. It's 16 that they want. I mean, they want to have 16 right now. So the camp is a bonus for the 16 talent choice. This is an important one. Turn in for the blue team would be vital though. Uh, JPL comes a bit too late. Can't get the interrupt. Wasn't able to get anything else done. Oh, but Barnabia? Yeah. Alright. 
Oh, Hazu, wow, runs straight into that combo, but they still get the turn in. They still need to deal with the bottom at the same time now. But that's another approach against Misha. <laughs> they hate Misha. <laughs> they hate Misha. Uh, not quite sure what the bear ever did to them. It doesn't really seem like they are a fan. Jaina is far out there, by the way, in the middle. And Jaina might actually die now. Hazo Ops, yep, is solo. There's no way. There's no... Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's like, thank you. With Tyrano there, there was absolutely no way. And now the problem is that... Oh my god, no. Oh. <laughs> I would be so pissed if I'm on Team Russia. You just don't get any kills in, do you? I mean, but they have the defense now against the Web Weaver, so that's a big, big plus. Leo has still pushed out the bot lane as much as he could. It's a weird game. Am I the only one? Is it a weird game? I mean, right now we have still the half-level lead for Team Russia. The Web Weavers were defended too. It's four kills against two. I, I don't know. It feels like it's a weird game. It's like the kills are not coming in the way that you would expect to... We're still seeing a lot of damage coming, especially on the side of washed up with all those cooldowns that it can drop in the burst damage. And if a combo lands, you're in trouble. But this entire setup with like the web weaver set coming in, it's, it just feels like the game is a little bit weird. There's so many heroes that should have died, in my opinion, throughout all of this. And we're never really feeling... It, it never feels that like one gets a big advantage and gets a bit of momentum going here. Even if they get a web weaver. Like, most of these objectives haven't really done a lot. And it's mostly the bear that's dying. <laughs> like, poor Misha is getting just murdered <laughs> the entire time here. Okay. So now we're having another approach through the middle. That camp, of course, once that the spell aura is over. It's usually defeated pretty quickly. Red Web Weavers are descending once more. JPL controlled completely, so he can't get close enough to Rega to push him in here. Still looking with a taunt, and that's an end. That's the end of it. Oh no, he actually is alive. He actually is alive, and they're trying to make the play down here. Horrify hasn't been used. I'm honestly surprised at the lack of Horrifies that we're seeing so far. And this could be exactly what I've been waiting for the entire time. Momentum swing. Uh, even a better save than Sorry Ancestral. They're taking the double kill and now they can move in. But look at this. Jaina with no ring and no Horrify being used there either. They go for a store. Can they finally get that kill there? Yes, they can. That might just have saved it. And the ring comes in, but it's a bit late. <laughs> Swarps is dodging grenades everywhere. And Barnabia actually dies. <laughs> just as I thought the game would get a little bit more normal. We're seeing the entire thing just go straight to hell once again. But right now, the momentum is swinging heavily in favor of Team Russia. They're going to get the first 40, and they might get even more. The, the, well, the, uh, sorry, the first keep. The fort at the bot lane is also falling, but that's the first keep of the game. And that is starting to increase the lead of experience that Team Russia has by quite a bit. It's still a scrappy game. It's still a very, very scrappy game, to tell you the truth. I'm just wondering that we don't see that Horrify more often uh, or that ring just connected differently here. I'm, I'm, the entire time when I'm looking at this, when I look at these team fights, I'm ba pretty much getting from Russia what I expected, but I expected from Washed Up more coordination around the Heroic's abilities and them trying to go more or less for a bit of a wombo setup there. Even that ring that we saw from Hazops towards the end, it just wasn't combined with anything else. If you get that little ring in while Gul'dan is alive and he gets an Echo Corruption with Runa's Affliction on that particular point, then all of a sudden you're more or less guaranteed two kills. But we don't really see that synergy. So it's a weird setup with the double mage and something that we're not quite as used to. But I expected a little bit more around that. Now obviously the problem is the level 20 ability. Eternal should maybe be get out of this. Well, maybe not. Nice, was a wrath. Can you walk away there? Smexy's so helping him as much as he can. And yeah, that still works. Eternal. It's got a fall against me. Yeah. Yeah, it still goes down. The Riptire is going to get some damage in, but obviously not going to take another kill here. There's a level 20 talents, and knowing the Russians, they're going to push for the keep now. They could go boss, but they don't. They actually have the Siege Shires, and they're saying, boys, we're going to take the keep. And that's the second keep then. With nine kills against four, they have now a massive, massive lead. It's a one level lead, and that's all that you need to go for the keep here. If you can get another kill, that might be it. 20 obviously gives us again buried alive. The game-changing ult, if there is any. 
but maybe we're not even going to see 20. <laughs> it's a good chance. Russia wants game 5. They won game 5 and they're going in already as it stands. Here comes the silence combo again. They're going once again for Misha, just controlling the bear here. Eternal gets out, the bear is down. Now there's the quick cocoon. I don't think that Russia can in. I don't think that they can right now. Horrifier is still up. And the Ring of Frost is also there. So 5 versus 5. I do not believe that they can make that play. That's too much wave clear. That's simply too much wave clear. Alright, there's the Boars again, locking them down. Turand is in trouble. Smexy dialing away. Horrify has been used. And they go for the kill. Rexa is dead. Rexa down. And they're trying to make the play back here. The Ring of Frost missed after the Entomb because Stark had the cooldown already. But Rhaegar with the self ancestral. Can he keep himself alive? Oh my god, Kolya! Oh, and the rip tire with a big, big damage. They're diving too deep. They don't have 20. They're diving too deep here. Mena still gets out, but Taranda is there. JPL with a taunt. He keeps alive a little bit longer, but Alara comes in with a combo. Mena, Mena still with the damage output. Nice move by him, but is it going to be enough? <laughs> yes, they barely saved Garrosh. I honestly think if you have false here, they try and go core again. Oh my god, that was wild. That was a wild, wild fight down there. 20 versus 20, now we have the Buried Alive, and they're gonna have those cooldowns ready in just a few seconds, but this is just all over the place right now. 11 kills against 5, and it is... It is insanely scrappy. That's like a lot of things. I mean, again, the Entomb against Nubarak and without Buried Alive and then the Ring of Frost that they were trying to set up there that didn't quite connect. They were attempting to make the next play happen shortly after that 4 kill and he just doesn't fall. Now it's 20 versus 20. Can they go core? Uh, sorry, can they go boss? I don't really think so. To run this back and sends the Owl immediately. And they see it. All right, so now we have two four, two keeps down. I mean, this is the big thing. In terms of structures, Washed Up has obviously been swept off the map pretty much. But they have level 20 versus 20 now, and the big ones that we have, just going to be safer with the Ice Blink, having Buried Alive, that's always the big one. Shooting Star, again, is a little bit safer here. That's a good one, but it's also the Haunt. These two, Tomb and Haunt, those are the big ones. And in terms of gems, I mean, both of them are really close to another turn in. None of them really has it yet. They're still battling for a few additional gems. But you have to be super careful if you're washed up now. Super careful at this point. So, once again... Uh, the bot lane is pushing in. This is the problem. The more you focus on the top lane right now, the more the bot lane is going to pressure. Uh, they're trying again to at least drop the bear here. And the more the bot lane pressures, the more you're forced to send someone down. And once that someone shows, then your opponent might make the play for either the turn in or the core. Uh, or the boss. And subsequently, the core, obviously. Yeah, that bot lane needs to be addressed. The next wave can just simply be taken out. You can just simply deal with this wave here. And I think that's what they're going to be doing. Uh-oh. There's nearly the kill against JPL. Rip tire. So far hasn't gotten any value. There's a lockdown with the boars and a big rip tire. Oh my god. That's Garrosh, that's Gul'dan, that's Jaina, and that's game. Right there. We're gonna go game five, boys. We are going game five. No, 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 no way. Smexy's dead, and that's the kill against the last one. Leoric falls. It's a team wipe. They are completely wrecking them. Then combo with Garrosh, sorry, with Rexas ult into the rip tire was just absolute insanity. Kill command into a rip tire, and he just ripped them to pieces. They just walked all over washed up, and that is game that brings us into game five. The final map is going to decide this series as Team Russia obliterates washed up in the final fight of game four. The final map, everybody. It is again Towers of Doom. Kind of remember that. Wasn't that the last series as well? Washed up against Team Russia. The series is actually tied. Team Russia has made it happen. I'm impressed. I'm honestly impressed by these guys. Not only Meta Madness, but just in general, how well they play these days. It's actually, it's a treat. It's really a treat. And it feels like they're improving continuously. 
Again, Tracer banned out. We have Mayev getting rid of. It would be shocked to not see Zeratul banned out too. But obviously, since the map is pretty big, Dehaka again comes into play. But Hazorps has been playing a fair amount of Falstad. Maybe something that they are also thinking about here. So we'll see. And yeah, we're going straight into that. So with that said, what is washed up banning? Anna, same thing. Tracer Anna, Tracer Anna, Tracer Anna. That's currently what they're getting rid of in most of these cases. And there's the Zaratul ban as well, which keeps us, of course, in play with Dehaka, with a Nubarak. Yeah, taken away from Stork immediately. But we're still having Hansa out there, Jaina out there, Turanda out there, Dehaka. Big, big picks here for this. <laughs> Rexa hasn't actually been banned yet. So they need to be a bit careful with those combos. A Nubrak with any kind of Jaina composition is already strong. So is Russia going to allow Jaina through? They can only Ming Mel Fury and Banabir on Liming. Reset City. Wanna have the resets? Gonna play around that. At the same time, is that gonna be the Jaina pick right now for Washed Up? They have still access to URL if they wanna play URL, which it did a lot, but it got oftentimes banned out. So that might be one of those cases. Where Eternal is just like putting his foot down and saying like, nope, we now need to pick her now or we risk them banning her. And they can go to Rwanda with this already. Jaina, to Rwanda? Yes, Jaina to Rwanda. Okay. The a little bit more flexible on the offline. Again, Urel, Dehaka, both work. You can still play in offline Arthas if you want so too. That's something that Eternal in particular has a lot of experience with. Had to do that for Team Liquid several times on this map in particular actually. <laughs> it was just pretty much the entire game, just like double soaking lanes over and over again. So, could still see a ban on Rexa if they are afraid of that. Or another frontline, I'm trying to ban out maybe Imperius even. Is that something that they could be afraid of because of Stork? Could that be one? Uh, there's too much to choose from right now. There's too many good heroes that exist on the side of Team Russia that you might be worried about here. Oh, what's the decision? I mean, even Alarak. Could even ban Alarak out. That was twice already a problem. It's Rexa instead. Get rid of Rexa. Make sure that Toxic has to go. And he's probably gonna play his Leoric now. Toxic usually plays his Leoric, and on this map, he's great because of the rotation mid top to catch both lane experiences. And that would most likely lead to the Haka being played by Eternal, I'd say. That's kind of what I expect here. Leo and the Haka to be taken. Maybe a blaze in one end, but Leo the Haka would be my bet. And there's the bird, and there is Leo. All right. Good pick here with Falstead, actually. I like that, because I'm pretty sure that Hazo Ops would have considered picking that hero. We could still see Jimmy, by the way. Jimmy hasn't been taken yet. And Jimmy has actually not seen as much play today as I expected. Dehaka, Jimmy. Have the slows through Jaina. Have the stuns available. Would be a good one. Dehaka and Jimmy. Yep, exactly. Nice lineup. Really good lineup for Washed Up, definitely. What is Team Russia going to pick for Stork though? Imperius, Johanna, Muradin, Diablo, Garrosh. All available. There was no focus on tanks whatsoever. It's all still up. They can literally pick whatever they feel is the best setup here for them with this. Ah, it's tough. I mean, against what they're playing here. It's a final map. This is where it's all on the line here. Diablo. Diablo, Leoric, Falstad, Malfurion, and Li Ming. Ladies and gentlemen, Towers of Doom, the final map in the series here at Division S, as we are heading into Towers of Doom, washed up against Team Russia, 2-2. Who's gonna take the third game in the best of uh, in the best of five? Who's gonna win it all? I'm gonna find out right now. Game number five. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> we had some insane games here already. To the left, ladies and gentlemen. We're seeing Smexy on Taranda, Hazops on Reyna, JPL on Anuburak with Mena on Jaina, and third on Dehaka. It's a really well-rounded and dangerous lineup that they're playing here. 
That's a really, really good setup for the final map. But then again, you look over to uh, the Russian team, and we have Stark on Diablo, Collier Martian on his his favorite hero. It is Malfurion. We're seeing Toxic on Leoric. Another absolute preference pick for them with Banabir on Li Ming and Falenda on Falstad. Uh, momentum, of course, is super important in this right now. I don't really think that the last win of Team Russia on Tomb of the Spider Queen is a big problem for the blue team. I don't really think that Washtab is in that, that mindset where they have issues with it in any way. But it's it's one of these things where you, yeah, <laughs> as, I, as I say, <laughs> we are actually seeing Stark already getting pretty wrecked at the bot lane here. So as I said, I don't believe that they are going to have issues with that loss on the last map. Obviously, they would have loved to win the game in uh, on the fourth and not having to play this fifth map. But I don't think that it's really going to affect their performance. But as it stands, I would still say that momentum in this series is going to be more important than anything else or in this last map. I mean, obviously, this is in general a map where momentum can decide a lot. If you start claiming bell towers of your opponent, then you can usually break through anything. And that is why we have so many comebacks on this map too. Because even if you're ahead and your opponent is far behind, once they claim the momentum, it can all shift within a few seconds. And we've now seen this proven over and over again, not only at mid-season brawls, but also at the, in the past few days. Meta Madness, for example, has shown that quite clearly. Other tournaments like the Nut Cup, same thing. So momentum is going to be important. And a lot of that is going to happen around level 10 when we see those death timers starting to increase when you really can gain some something really valuable, some more map control by killing a hero or two in a big team fight and then trying to go for the structures. And the bot lane will have a lot of that focus. It's interesting to see that Faustan is also at the top side by the way. It offers a slight advantage because he can fly down and he can mirror the Haka's movements. Not quite to the same speed, but still. But it also means that Leoric is now starting a bit of a different rotation where he finds himself more so at the bot lane, but can also still go into the middle and help out with the wave clear over there. So it's a bit of a different set that you would normally see on the map, but definitely something can work here. In terms of talents, we don't have anything fancy yet. We're still seeing the Underking on level 4, so more of an engaged build from JPL. We've been talking about the Carapace build for quite some time. So that's going to be important. Yeah, but there comes the Dibbles engage. Hazorbs is going to try and control that for as much as he can during the game with the penetrating round. Every single time he can push Diablo back. It's going to be a big one for them. And now we're having the traditional... I mean, it should be the traditional 1-1 one, one split at the top. And then you're trying to fight over the one in the middle. We had actually some really cool moves in the back against... Um, uh, in the past few days against a team that plays uh, um, a global here. That's a nice zoning. If they can control Stark for a little bit longer, Stark gets stunned once, and actually, yes, that's the channel. It's a double channel. They might even go for the triple now. Nah, you usually don't invade the top right. So yeah, two for one in favor of washed up. False is still getting the channel through over here. So that's another four shots fired. So far, so good for them. Pretty in, uh, there's not really a lot happening yet. Stalk is of course always looking for that kill. They're already pinging that there's someone in the bush so that they're not going too far out. But still, you're always trying to be sure that there's no one rotating too aggressively. And already we have a similar setup at the top where Ethernal is trying to push out Farlander. But he must have heard already a call where team said like, listen, we don't know where they are, just play this cool right now. And the bot lane is still getting pressure. The, the thing really with Team Russia is that every single player on their team seems to be on a hero that he really excels at. I feel like the one where we have to question that a little bit is Farlander, since he doesn't play that much false set. But if you think about the tournaments of the past two, three weeks, and then you look at the lineup that we're having for the opponent, I mean, Bana beyond Li Ming, Koya Martian, Omal Fury, and Leoric played by Toxic. If those are not three stable heroes for Team Russia that really form the backbone of so many team compositions that they played, then I don't know what is. So again, we're having the attempt to go for the first kill of the game. Level 7 talents are ready for both now, which gives us again the Calamity. Always have to highlight that. It's, it's like you play a different hero. <laughs> Once if you have Calamity, it always feels like Li Ming becomes a different hero and is finally, oh yeah, I'm a real girl now. So then she can finally get some damage in. Or just really go for just for that bunny hop build. Boom, 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 boom. Gotta pop them all. 
64 stacks for Diablo in the meantime. So he's starting to get his hit point pulled together too. And on a single kill. We're five minutes in and we haven't seen a kill yet. There's still the scouts happening with Tyrande as she sends the owls across. Over and over again. And there's Eternal. Still up at the top. Pushing this out. Bot lane. Who's the first one to blink? Which global is going to be used first? Is the drag going to connect? It's the important one. You need to connect that drag. And there it is. The drag does connect, but it is actually immediately negated. Toxic is low. Eternal is getting another one in. Nicely done. Barnabier already low for a moment, but gets healed a moment later. So, yep, everybody is in trouble. Good control. Hazard with the penetrating round. Holding the cooldown back just as he needs to. Once the Diablo goes in, he needs to make sure that he's not able to get that flip over in. And that's 28 against 36 points on the core right now. So we at least got the channel through. It's a big win for them. And they're trying to get the kill too. And Stork is down. Stork goes down. That's the kill right there. That's the first one in the game. Nicely done. Washed up. They're able to get the altar. And now they are in a position where they also got the kill. Nine and a half. That's what we're seeing. The experience on both sides is nearly the same. But of course, there's a bit of momentum now happening since the tank is gone. And you can approach that wall. If Diablo is alive and you approach that wall, you risk just being thrown on the other side and pushed into the fort itself. So you have to be extremely cautious around it. But with Diablo down, they can go and still break through this entire thing. And that's a huge, huge advantage for them now going forward because they don't have to worry about this anymore. There's also the level 10 abilities. Interestingly enough, we're having again Reyna holding his ult back a little bit. Oh, there's the Apocalypse. Hazo is hit, but not hit hard enough. And Jaina's on the way back right now. Ring of Frost, obviously. Mainer, the meme master, he only goes a uh, Sorry, he only goes ring. Ring of Frost. That's the big one. Not really a fan of the water elemental. 17 seconds in. Okay, guys. Now we're talking. Only one kill in the game so far. They're moving in again. And the question is, is it just going to be a trade? Or are they going to go for the big fight? Another wave being pushed out by Eternal. Oh, actually, it looks like they might be able. They might be giving up both. Look at Reyna on the minimap. He's completely isolated right now. He is completely isolated. Koya Martian has to start this one again. But Hazops is losing the Banshee and has to be careful. Oh, oh, Banabia. No, the Beetle. Nearly taking him down. But still, we're seeing Mane in trouble, and he is dead. The gust into the corner. Barnabia might be nearly falling, but he's not dead yet. And well, he's certainly trying to get the kill, but he doesn't get it, and he himself is now all of a sudden completely isolated. And that is the Dehaka death right there. Double kill. Russians with the double kill as they are moving in. Great play by them. Mene not able to get a good ring out, and that's the second shot now fired. So all of a sudden, it is dead even. Dead even in the game here. 28 points against 28. Yeah, this was not quite what they wanted there. And it all comes down to the missed kill against Li Ming. They were so close. She was down to 100 hit points, and they couldn't get it. Hazops again, penetrating rounds, penetrating rounds, penetrating rounds. The entire time, controlling the movement. And he has the ring. And the kill, Li Ming and Liu are both down. A quick double kill. Great. Well done. That is a great kill from their perspective. And Team Russia all of a sudden... <laughs> is already realizing that they can't just simply take that easy once that they are able to take one of these quick kills in there because there's always the comeback potential. They're not the only team that can come back into these series. So once again, we're already having the bot lane completely pressured because guess what? A new Brock spawns beetles. There's the cocoon and they get the bell tower and now they're trying to get the kill too. They're making the play for Stalk. They're trying to body block. They're already getting some damage in, but Falenda just pushes them out with another Gust, saving the team for the time being. But the control has been lost. And experience is there right now. Experience with level 13. It's just a little bit ahead. A slight advantage in talents. Nothing really is going to last too long, but it's good enough to help them keep that bottom bell tower. Eternal already actually moving in trying to help in that 5 versus 5 because we're actually seeing Team Russia set everything up 
in those little bushes there. And here comes the stun against JPL, and JPL barely survives, and here comes the Apocalypse after the Entomb. It zones them out, but he doesn't get the kill. Mena is again about to fall, and he goes down, but throws the ring out. Connects it with two. Can they get the counter kill? That's what they're looking for. Barnaby has to move away, but Leo might still die, and he still is able to survive. The channel has already happened. There's only three shots that were fired, but that's three shots against washed up. So yes, they have the bot lane control now, but they are still losing out on the objective itself. And as long as Mena doesn't have his baseline completed, he doesn't have the ice block to dodge this damage. And he doesn't get the peel that he really needs here. And it really also started with JPL just face checking a bush where he should have kind of known that there's probably someone sitting in there. So him going into that bush was a bit of an issue. Okay. This integrate burns the cocoon again. Cooldown. Oh, nearly the play. Nearly the play into the death zone. But they're going for JPL again. And he is down. In two misses, but they get the buck deleted. And all of a sudden, you have a massive amount of momentum swing again in the hands of Team Russia. But Mena is coming back. Mena, Mena wants to kill. And can they get one against Stark? Oh, it's close. He's trying to control the movement here with a slow, but he can't. But with four heroes down here, they can still hold on to the bell tower. That was a scary moment, to be honest. After you lose the first hero here, after your tank is gone, there's just so much potential that the opponent goes in and carries the momentum straight into the structure and reclaims it. And that could still be the case. They have to defend here. It's not going to be easy at all. But look at also damage numbers at this point. 33,000 for Hazo. As long as Reyna is in, he's going to get those auto hits connected. And now, even though they're behind in points on the core, the triple altar phase is going to be a big one. You trade two for one here? You're in the lead again. So if they can make that work, that would be extremely good for them. But so far, the fights, a lot of them haven't really gone their favor. Eternal is already trying to eye for this one. Farlander is sitting at the side, but this is a freebie for Mena down at the bottom of the map. An easy connect. Yeah, all had to be dodged. Five shots are already fired over here. They connect. In the meantime, that little fight, the skirmish is starting. Leo gets the own channel at the top right, and that means three points off the core off washed up 22 against 23 it's all about the top left right now and that's potentially five more shots taken off the russian team they're starting to go in here in tomb nice jpl dodges it short one interesting in tomb over the wall here complete cage around the new barak uh, banabia gets the channel he actually gets the channel the interrupt is too late the three shots are in Ever since they got those bell towers at the bot lane controlled, all of a sudden we are seeing uh, Washed Up not winning anything on the objective, pretty much. They won a single objective since then. There were four potential altars, and three of them went over to their opponent. 30, 23 against 19. Both of the teams close to level 10, uh, so level 16 right now with talents. And it's honestly a little bit... Uh, a little bit scared here, it feels. Still the bot lane. Nicely done also by Toxic. Look at this. this is an entire wave against Lost. We're seeing a similar situation at the top of the Eternal. At the bottom, the poke is of course still happening. 16 talent on both sides, which gives us the northern exposure and epicenter. Big talents. Big talents on 16. 100%. I mean, look at this. Every, every single talent here is insane. Every single talent they just got is insane. Obviously, it also means that we have domination for Diablo, and if Stark is just getting one good lockdown against a single target, this is going to be great. But yeah, he has two shots fired. That was an important one. Nice cocoon use here too, making sure that Stark can't control that. But that's two shots fired right now and brings the core at least down to 21. So uh, again, very close. And the bird oh, flies away. But close, 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 close. Now, Falander, again, the hit point pool on uh, false side is not really the best. But they're poking. Just look at that poke. Hammerang and Liming combos are coming in, and that bell tower is falling. Yeah, they have another nice setup here. Good free damage coming in. 10 seconds until the alt at the top is up, and the rotation has already happened from the Russian team as they're saying, guys, again, we can't get it. We are not able to get it. One for one trade. Let's see if that happens. If it does, then it is pretty much even. Yeah, the interrupt against Leo again, buying them a little bit more time. Boro had to be used too, though. And they're starting to move in. There's an Uburak. He's the first one who has to go. And Uburak gets isolated for a second, gets the stun through. Bot lane is pressured also by Mercenary Camp, so that's another couple of shots that could be fired for Washed Up. 
This one is going to be important. That's three right there. And they will connect. Here comes the drag. Immediately the Nature's Cure being used. Still Russia looking around. Trying to find the opening. Time being bought for the bottom mercenaries. The pumpkin's about to engage. Oh, talking engage. Stalk goes in. The entomb against Hazu, and he's down. What a fantastic setup. What an amazing, amazing combo by Team Russia. The push into the entomb, and oh my god, the three men connect with the ring, but they don't have the damage today. Hazu isn't there. They don't have the damage anymore, and they can't drop them. But the ring was great. Connected with three. But killing Reyna in that fashion was just absolutely stellar. Now, on the other hand, a four versus five, and Smexy is low. Eternal is in trouble, and the channel has already started again, as Banabir is getting it completed. Another three shots fired, as we are seeing them fall down to 13 against 18 points. The Russian team is really doing it right now. Unbelievable. But the combo against Jimmy, the engage by Diablo, him just overpowering and going straight for the push into the wall, and then the entomb over it with the immediate apocalypse follow-up. That was absolutely fantastic. House Ops didn't stand a chance here. He was just completely annihilated in that fight. Four against four now. Washed Up is actually starting to fall far behind here. They're a level behind, they're five shots behind, and they're making a desperation play on the boss. And it's, it has been scouted. Stark has just like routinely tried the ability, then all of a sudden sees like, uh, the fuck? And now the Hacker's dead. Let's just pick Eternal off, they get the Hacker in the rotation top, and they take him down, and now they're saying, well, you already started the boss, we might as well end it, right? So they're going straight in for it. That would put down Washed Up into the single digits if they actually take this. And they, they have the abilities too. They have Gust and they have they have the Apocalypse. You can't fight this. They have to let that go. And they do. That's another four shots fired right now. That's nine points on the core. They're literally doubling it at this point. Nine against 18 and just look at experience again. <laughs> oh, that hurts even more if it's taken. That could put them down to one single point. Now again, the Haka is going to be back. The Haka will be back. But that, the Haka is not the problem. <laughs> the problem is this. Level 20. And Forza is already at the top side, pressuring this one as well. He can maybe even get that in time. He should be able to get that in time. Guys, this is a disaster. This could be game. Theoretically, this might be game. Well, as Smexy gets the channel through, it seems like we're at least not gonna have the game end here. Yeah, so he gets three connected, but now the bird flies in and they're getting five. Three against five, and that means four points. That's boss. Anything, and it's a team fight. Wind tunnel, wind tunnel being used. They're going for it, and they're killing. They're killing Smexy. Smexy is down. The apocalypse in the wind tunnel. Oh my God! The Haka is isolated as well. He's not going to get out of this one. Eternal is dead. They go for the double kill. Guys, they have just taken the top bell tower. They're going for Hazu. Hazu. Ooh, and the kill. The resets on Liming. The damage, and they are dropping the bottom bell tower. They're going to move in the middle. They're going to move into the middle. Just look at this. This is already on half HP. And at the same time, obviously, Washed Up knows this too. They're rushing to the top. They're trying to get this one back. They have to hurry or the barrage is going to start. There's the laser already. Liming is just a zzzz, trying to get that in. And this should at least give us one shot. Maybe not. Maybe not. Ooh. I mean, hello, endgame. Nine kills against three. 15 against 4 points on the core right now, and this is getting really dangerous because obviously now we're going on bottom lane control. Washed Up is starting to lose the control of the series. And it was just back and forth the entire time. There's the, there's the Buried Alive, there's the stun, Ring of Frost comes out to save them, and it barely does. Mena on the other hand, Mena, Mena, no, Ice Block, and... Oh, Smexy, no way! Smexy keeps him in play. The cocoon against Li Ming was the saving grace here. The cocoon against Li Ming. Now they have to stop these, but they can. But the altar is spawning. The altar is spawning in 10. One shot fired. One shot fired. That's three. Three on the core now. And that's another two. Guys, this is this this is game. Is it game? They, they have to interrupt and they're trying to. This has to be. Can they actually... Oh, 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 oh. My fury is dead. They get Malfurion. It's one point on the core against 15, but they got Malf. And without level 20, still they're moving in. And thank you, Stork, pushing him out of the apocalypse. 
he actually gets away here and the fight is not over yet five versus four here's the buried life but the drag hellgate use toxic is down they get the double kill and they dead the double kill but at least Farlander kills one now the luburak is dead all of a sudden it turns again against gets pushed up the drag doesn't connect guys this is a three versus three all of a sudden they just killed two and then they lost two shortly after they're trying to go for Barnabia. Hazo Ops is channeling two against six points whenever an Arta is channeled and only one point on the core left, but they are living to fight another day and they have level 20. Oh, oh God, what is this game? Hazo Ops, he's getting the control of the bell tower back. A single point on the core against 13. They let two, three of the mercenaries or the pumpkins at the bottom move through because they needed to move into position in the middle. And here comes the attack. Toxic is there. Toxic is there. He has the entomb once he's back. But he doesn't use it. The Haka was too far out. The Haka was too far out. 11 against 13. Oh my god. What a game. Only one is needed. Only one is needed. And they are starting to go for it. Here comes the engage. Dehaka with a drag. Dehaka with a drag. And Tomb comes in. And Tomb burns everything there. But no, it doesn't connect. Eternal, he's still alive. And he gets away. And they actually drop those pumpkins too. It's another set that's already in play. Top of Bell Tower has also been reclaimed. Not that it really matters too much, by the way. I mean, a single point on the core and you're down to so the top lane. Unless there's another mercenary taken, doesn't matter too much. But they're already starting to move in. They're stealing the camp away. That was a big one. Wind tunnel is being used. And JPL in the back is a bit isolated. Needs to get away from this. He needs to move through the bell tower. JPL is just screwed. JPL is dead. JPL is dead and now Tyrande might fall as well. Toxic wants to go for Mena. He's nearly getting it. Smexy survives. They all survive. The ice block as well. But now look at this. Up at the top. Top left. Top right. And Falstead is he flying? Falstead is flying. Falstead is flying. The Haka has to burrow. He has to burrow right now. No, nope, it's too late. The connect is there and that's game. That's game. Team Russia takes that 3-2 against Washed Up and wins the series.